Hello everybody and welcome to Doyle Boys. I'm James, the cool one. I'm Steven, the artist. I'm Andrew, the crater inspector. The what? What did you say? The what? I'm Andrew, the gator inspector. Gator? My bit is that I'm going to say something, a weird job title every week. Okay, that's interesting. And this is a podcast where each week us three brothers decide what is the absolute best of a particular subject by going through a knockout tournament with 16 entrants. On this week's episode, we're going to be deciding what the best TV show is. But before we get into that, what's been going on, fellas? So what has been going on? <laughs> I thought you were going to have some <laughs> oh, I, I, do have, say. I do have something, yeah. Uh, well, as an artist, I've been working on my art, uh, which is making music that I don't know how to make, making pictures I don't know how to make, and making videos I don't know how to make. That's what I've been doing. Not much has been happening with me. Okay, what about you? <laughs> <laughs> this week, I have been playing sports and working. Same thing I always Ooh. do. And I've been trying to work out how to make games. Yay! Or at least how to teach people. So basically, just we've all just been doing things we always normally do. Yeah. This is very interesting for listeners to learn about who we are and yeah. what makes us amazing and why we have all the knowledge that they need to understand for us to give them a full judgment about whatever topic we're talking about. This week, I've been furiously, furiously watching TV shows. I haven't <laughs> slept. I've watched all of our contestants, discovered each's weakness and strength. And I've decided that Breaking Bad is the winner. Oh, so we're getting the spoilers there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny, Andy, there when you were like, this week I have been, it reminded me of the great TV show that's not a contender this week, uh, The Fast Show, when the character would go, this oh, week yeah. mostly I have been eating cabbage. <laughs> and I think that's a nice way maybe to have a, what do you call it, a sequitur or segue into the show, where James, you'd suggested that perhaps we would talk about some really good shows that haven't made it. So maybe we could bring up one or two each of those and then we'll just go, okay, let's go into round one. Yeah, so a couple of shows like that didn't make it in for different reasons. I know I had a couple that like I didn't include on this list because I'm the only one who watches them. So they won't necessarily get a good argument from you two. But the a couple of shows that would like personally would be near the top for me. One of them is Doctor Who. Ugh. And I love, see exactly, that's that's the reaction why I didn't include Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cute when you watch it when you're 12. Like, Oh yeah, not like, I mean, I didn't start watching it until I was about 30, but anyway. <laughs> I know. Uh, another one was The Wire. Which I oh, The Wire. I haven't watched The Wire, no. You haven't watched it? The Wire is so good. And I think, Andrew, you would definitely enjoy it. Stephen, I think you would enjoy it too. If no, I wouldn't. I think <laughs> no, I wouldn't. You don't know anything about me. That's true. See, I, there was a few that I wanted to mention, but a lot of the TV shows that I watch, my partner watches as well, and mm. they're well, they're shows that everyone watches. But things like Sons of Anarchy, I really enjoyed watching Sons of Anarchy because it was light watch and it was like some cool stuff blew up in it and all and some cool <laughs> stuff happened in it, which is good TV. No, it's good TV. I I enjoyed them all. And you, you was another one that was on Netflix. That was really. I never really, watched that. It's really I good. good things about it. I think there's a third season coming out at the end of this year. And there was one other one. Oh, actually, The Night Manager. With Tom Hiddleston is in it. I think it's from a couple of years ago. But it's a really good watch as well. The ending is probably. Uh, this is going to be a spoiler. I'm not going to say the ending, but. The ending is the worst ending to a TV show that I've ever seen in my life. It was <laughs> the most anticlimactic ending I've ever, ever seen. Ruined the whole series for me. But Sounds the great. Seri- the series <laughs> Sounds a like a watch. watch. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, like, I didn't know there was going to be so shit at the end, so I really enjoyed watching it. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Steve? Was there any you didn't include? Yeah, there's some I didn't include because I didn't think of them. <laughs> and some I just didn't include. But for me, there's some big hitters missing, like... Trailer Park Boys, South Park. Uh, one, actually, Andy, I'm surprised you didn't say because you put me onto it, is Letter Kenny. Which Letter is, Kenny is brilliant. I fully no, thought I that one of you would put Letter Kenny in this. It's so good. It's perfect. Like, I don't know why it's, I haven't picked it, but I picked <laughs> what I've picked and it is what it is. But also, other shows that are great, like uh, How It's Made or yeah. A Question of Sport. Shows that aren't fiction. Like, yeah, A Question of Sport. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, shows like that, I didn't even think of it because they're TV series, but... Never mind the Buzzcocks. Never mind the Buzzcocks used to be very good, yeah. But anyway, mm-hmm. these are the picks. It is what it is. And My I issue with Letter, Letter Kenny is that I cannot pirate anything anymore. For some, I don't have a laptop and I can't figure out what, what shows. I would pay for it. I Literally, the other, the other day, I was trying to pay to watch Letter Kenny. Can't it's a hard thing to do. Yeah, it is hard to do. I have shows like that that I'd love to watch. And I've never actually watched them because I can't get access to them on the various confusing digital streaming servers. Yeah. You can't yeah. get Hulu over here is the problem. Without if, setting up it's, if it's not like on Netflix or or Disney Plus or whatever, like it's kind of like, oh, well, I just don't know how to get that thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I, I'm not going to go buy a movie on like Amazon or whatever or, or iTunes, however it works. You know what I mean? Mm. I literally have no idea how that works. Yeah, it's, it's very. It's expensive. Idea. I think. I think it's. A, I think yeah. it's like nearly yeah. a tenner to watch a film, like, <laughs> which is old school. This is to do with nothing, but you know, uh, the gay guy in that was. I was like, Stewart. Stewart. Yeah. Okay. He's on TikTok and he makes a lot of TikToks. His he admitted that his father's name in real life is Stewart. Oh, I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> He's always begging. Which hot cock. And boys, that's his dad's name. Like, it's so funny. <laughs> right, well, with all that, should we dive into the the knockouts themselves? Let's do it. Cool. Sure. We'll start off with round one. We've got eight matchups in the first round. And rather than go through them all one by one, we'll just go through each match as they come, I suppose. It makes the most sense, doesn't it? Mm, that sounds good. So first up, we have a battle of the... The kind of 90s sitcoms, Friends versus Seinfeld. I'm so hot. I'm going to get sick. This is just <laughs> too much. Who put in Friends? Admit it. I want you to admit that you put Friends on this list. Well, it wasn't me. I put Friends on this list. You made me sick. Friends has an absolute <laughs> chance of winning. <laughs> Against Seinfeld? The OG? The Against Seven all Series of these. Beauty? Against Friends, all of them. where one of the biggest jokes in it is that... Chandler's afraid to be gay. Uh, Ross it hasn't is aged a well. pathetic womanizer. It's aged uh, really badly. <laughs> it really has. Mm. All right. I guess I can sit back and let you hash out the details, but it sounds to me like it's a piece of trash. <laughs> Where Seinfeld is... <laughs> you know, it's got all that going on. Bo, bo, bo. <laughs> I mean, just for the baseline alone, I guess Seinfeld could win. <laughs> but I've tried to watch Seinfeld, and it never drew me in. I, I only watched Seinfeld a few years ago and like I'd never watched it before. I think maybe some random episodes or whatever. But like I think I just got hooked on it immediately because it's so damn good. Like it's one of those shows that like everyone talked about how good it was and was like, oh sure it's never gonna be as good as everyone says. Mm. But like a few episodes in, when you realise that George is just Larry David, it's just <laughs> oh okay. Yeah, this is pretty good art. <laughs> You know, oh, well, maybe if I knew that. I suppose when you're looking back at it and you're more familiar, yeah, with yeah. David, that would be a way. I don't really know actually Larry David that well, which we'll talk about in a while, perhaps. Yeah, but, uh, I just think there's not a bad episode, and then you have Kramer, or maybe there's like three or four bad episodes, but you've got Kramer in the mix. Uh, yeah. Elaine Bennis is just amazing. The way that it starts off, that these people have been friends for ages, they have previous relationships. Uh, like uh, Seinfeld and Ellen have this previous long-standing relationship and how Kramer and Seinfeld's relationship came to be is never really explained until yeah. later series. It's this universe that already exists and is so real. I just uh, find it fascinating. Whereas Friends is Rachel goes to leave the room and says bye and Ross goes, okay, bye, mommy. And he immediately goes, oh no, I'm going to get <laughs> jeered for calling her mommy even though we have a baby together. And no one in the room can comprehend that that might be why they're calling their mommy and daddy. And then the baby's gone for like five years. Nobody t- nobody knows about the baby. It's just, it makes no sense. The show makes no sense. But 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 the love story, Stephen. Which the love one? story for the ages. Between Ross and Monica? And Ross, and, Ross and Rachel. <laughs> I just think Friends is something that you can watch whenever you want. You just feel like thrown on the TV and not thinking about anything. I don't know. Maybe that's the same for Seinfeld. I don't know. No, I, I know what you mean about Friends. It's fairly easy, like, kind of background viewing. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I know it's aged so badly. It's, that's oh, the thing. It's aged so horribly. So many the jokes are just about 
worrying about being homosexual is it really is it. it's all like because mm-hmm. you imagine yeah. if you were gay yeah <laughs> really, really, really <laughs> so, like it's 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 1990 like i know yeah. Freddie mercury had lived a full life by this time like nobody was afraid of being gay who was mm. Well, maybe they were. I don't know. I didn't live in that time. Yeah, no, we weren't around then. <laughs> no, so I don't want to judge them too harshly in, in that sense. But um, look, my flag is planted on the mast. The guy who's who's most in favour of it, Andrew, is saying it hasn't aged well. <laughs> well, it hasn't aged well. I don't, think and you have, I don't think you can talk about friends without saying that it hasn't aged well. Because some of the things, but the show things it, are shocking. You're actually afraid and, to laugh at. Yeah. And what, what season do you think the monkey comes into it? season I think isn't it season one season one he gets a monkey season one he gets a monkey now if you're going right. to argue that having a monkey in a show is a bad thing oh I it's think a we bad might thing. have a difference of a, mm, I mean anytime in a monkey turns up why is having a monkey in a show bad thing anytime a monkey turns up usually good things happen why is a monkey a bad thing in television show you just don't have, you didn't have an argument to follow up <laughs> like why does he have a monkey it makes no sense the monkey doesn't do anything and there's all these constant shots where you're pulled out of the show because the cameraman has to sit really still and stare at Marcel while his trainer clicks at the door. So he runs over the door and pretends to open a door and then someone else opens for him to do a quick cut that shows him going out. And then a monkey's well, I mean, if you're going to argue that the problem is that like TV shows are fake, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where like, we're going here. Like, It's just so blatantly poorly done. It's just shocking to me. Like. Okay, yeah. I can see this one because I haven't watched enough science. Like, and I'll trust... trust. I'll trust that you two idiots' opinion is right this one time. Cool. Thanks, okay. Andy. But I'll come back. I'll come back to it in a later podcast and tell you. <laughs> I was so hot going into that. I hate friends so much. I'm so happy that it happened. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I, 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 I do, I'm arguing that Friends is a great TV, should be down as one of the greatest TV shows, just for its longevity and how much, how often it is on TV. But fuck me, I hate Friends. <laughs> Okay, let's Preach. move on to the next round before I die. Okay. The next match. <laughs> the next match. Yeah. The uh, uh, the next matchup is the Office versus Curb Your Enthusiasm, and we're talking about the the US Office now, aren't we? The US. Office yeah, I think we'll go with the US US Office because there's yeah. more of it. Yeah, just mm. because. Like, I will just say before we go on, like the UK Office is one of my favorite shows of all time as mm. well. Brilliant show, yeah. And yeah. definitely could easily have merited a place on this list of our 16 yeah. favourite shows that came to our mind Absolutely. this week. And extras, probably. True, true. So, That's the US really Elvis versus Curb Your Enthusiasm. Andy, I'd love to hear your uh, opinion on this because I know you're a big Curb fan. Uh, out of the three was probably the, the biggest. Um, The Office, when I was young, when I was watching it, I was really, really hooked on it. I was really hooked on the whole Pam and Jim thing. I was... I really got invested in all their in all the characters because all of them were so funny and all of them had such a story, good story. And Steve Carell was just amazing so, in every episode. He's mm. so good. But I know we had we've had this argument before. I kind of struggled in the later seasons with some of the guest managers. Yeah, mm. and uh, some of the storyline got a bit warped or whatever, and it wasn't uh, as good as it should be. Or as Carb, I don't. I don't think I've ever seen a bad episode of Carb Your Enthusiasm. No. And the humor in it is, uh, it's not highbrow like, but it's, sometimes it can be hard to get. Whereas anybody can laugh at the office like, but Carb's and uh, Carb's humor is just really good. Yeah, it does require a bit more thought, a bit more yeah. paying attention to what's going on. Yeah, like Carb, you're not going to sit. Like if I was watching the office, I'd be on my phone as well, like looking, reading something, probably. Mm. But Carb, you have to kind of give your full attention to it, or else you miss something that's going to be absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Carb, like, pulls in so many of its in- influences in an interesting way as well. Like, like I remember there's a whole, I think, like, the fourth season of it or something, there's a whole thing where Larry David is going to be in this stage show of the, the producers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't right. know. Did you did you ever see, like, the producer's film? I never seen it. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't seen it when I watched that on... Curb your enthusiasm, like, but I thought the curb the series on Curb was really good anyway. And then I was like, oh, sure, I, wa- I should watch that producer's thing. And then like when I watched the film, like the episode at the end of that series, Larry ha- goes through this whole thing when the stage goes, when the show goes on and all this, and it's basically the exact same plot from the film, but they kind of mirror it in a really 
hilarious way. So then going back and watch the episode again, like there's so much more to it that I didn't even get the first time. Like, you know what I mean? Mm. And yeah, I always think yeah. it's interesting when shows do that. Like it's got layers. It's got layers. like Andy was yeah. saying. There's a lot going on. That's not just Michael is lost in a forest. And that's the good <laughs> yeah. of the mask is too mega. But the one thing I'd say in favor of the office, which to me it sounds like both a year lean towards curb. In favor of the office, I would say you. There's so many moments where you will just die laughing, like uncontrollably. Yeah laughing yeah. like you can't even it's like watching yeah. robin williams that's what mm-hmm. i would say it's like yeah, it's just yeah. so brilliant and as andy alluded to when he mentioned uh, the jim and pam story there is moments of real um pathos like this really is there i don't yeah. think curb really has that drama is a simple word for it which i'm just saying because andrew didn't know what pathos meant <laughs> curb doesn't really have that i don't think Does pate? Andy watch you're saying it? pate i don't know what you mean <laughs> Does Curve have any sort of anything other than comedy? I don't know. He split, up with, he split up with his wife, but like, it was the whole thing was how much he hated his friend after, wasn't it? What's his friend's name? The poor guy who died. No. Oh, um. Big tall guy. Oh, what's his name? Oh, Super Dave. Yeah. Super Dave, that's his name. He dogs are it, yes. Yeah, he does. <laughs> that's such a good impression. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's hilarious. He's so Literally. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I I would agree. It probably it, there isn't as much like a, uh, an emotional heart to it, mm. but it is definitely equally as hilarious at times. Definitely equally. Like there's there's bits like there's bits of it where I just be laughing my head <laughs> off. Like, you know what I mean? yeah, but one of it when Michael comes in and he's after <laughs> burning his foot with a waffle. <laughs> I, was, I was literally thinking about that. It's so funny. And he goes through the whole thing. And he's talking about it as if it's perfectly normal. I like I like the ba- taste of bacon in the morning, the smell of bacon. So I put meat fat fire or George Foreman beside my bed. What is so wrong with that? <laughs> I turn but, it on and I go back to sleep for ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> I, uh, like I don't, I just don't think Curb has such powerful moments as that. It definitely has some. Um, yeah, I was going to say Curb has in its favor that it is consistently on a similar. But, you know, between 7 to 9 out of 10 every episode. Mm. Throughout however many seasons we're on now, it must be 15 seasons or something like that now. Or 13 or 14 seasons, I suppose. And The Office has a massive dip after five seasons. Like, does, a dip yeah. to well, nearly after, be unwatchable. After Steve Carell leaves, it just isn't as good. Like It's just like, not as good. It's just not as good. There's 20 episodes, maybe I'm... I'm estimating here, but there, I think there's like 20 mm. episodes in some seasons of The Office. Yeah. What's Carb? 10? 12? 10, 12, oh. something like that, yeah. What's your hot take, Jim? I, I personally would definitely lean more towards Carb just because I do think it is so much more funny. And like, as much as I obviously love The Office, like, because there is hilarious bits in The Office. But I think they struggled after after Jim and Pam got together. I think they struggled yeah. with what to do with that. And they yeah. tried to recreate some more Office romances, like with Andy and stuff. Mm-hmm. In different ways, and it just never really worked as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you're because saying the story you, you didn't like... enjoy you didn't enjoy Dwight and Angela's love line? Well, not really, because it just took like weird twists of like Angela going off with Andy and all this stuff. Like it was kind of like they had a contract. It kept going for. By the time it got to the contract, it was it was not as good. The first little while of that relationship was enjoyable, but it mm. just went on, and they end up together in the end. It was yeah. like. Mm. everyone cannot end up together it doesn't make any dank sense no and Andy becomes at the start Andy's quite an interesting enough character you know he's got those rage problems and he's overly nice and he's mm. kind of one of the favourites for a year or two mm. but then really when he to do, when they try to indeed when they try to make <laughs> him bigger and they basically he does an impression of Steve Carell doing Michael Scott that's what he does yeah. for the last year yeah. or two of the series and it's terrible I'm yeah, he, I, don't, I don't even watch Curb I'm changing my vote to Curb <laughs> he 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 wasn't a strong enough character to lead the show. Yeah. Jim wasn't a strong enough character to lead the show. I don't think anyone. I look, it was going to be hard to follow Steve Carell in it because he was just so good. But yeah, they didn't they didn't uh, work it out well in the end. Really, did that. Whereas they replaced Larry David with a small pumpkin on the head of a broomstick, and nobody noticed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I think I think we've got a clear winner here now. I think so. I think we got to go with Carb. 
Yep, I think Carr wins that one just because the office has such a a dip, bad a dip, a dip, yeah. and Carb just never dips. Okay, so next up then we have Flight of the Concords versus oh. versus It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. So you got one show that has two seasons, and yeah. another one that has fifteen seasons. <laughs> Very hard. And they're both kind of unique ish mm. shows yeah. in their own way. Like yeah. Flight of Concords is a little similar to the Tenacious D T V show. It's always sunny is a little bit similar to a lot of other sitcoms. The Seinfeld but, is obviously a huge influence on it. Yeah, and stuff like that. But um it does it in its own way. Of course. Wow. Ooh. That's really hard. It's really hard. It's hard because what do you what what do you think? Because Flight of the Concords is so short, it's like a concentrated ball of goodness. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's so perfect. And like obviously the songs are so good, like and we mm-hmm. obviously know those songs inside out and backwards like you know what i mean mm, yeah, yeah and it's kind of hard to beat something that is this like fully little contained thing in its own way mm-hmm. but at the same time like i do think the first series of flight of the concords is much not much but it is better than the second series do you know what i mean that's true that is true there is the songs <laughs> a the songs aren't different as good form. in the second series yeah 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 that's definitely true um but I think in the second series they were able to, to they did more uh, elaborate things. Like I think in the second series they had the one where they're going for a jog and they lost their dog and they're looking for a woman <laughs> in the area. Yeah, <laughs> epileptic dog. <laughs> the epileptic dog. <gasps> and uh, is her name Barbara? No, I think her name is Bra- 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 <laughs> <laughs> Like that's really I know sense that he went me and you say, it, but it's really intelligent writing. And I think they have the one with. Who's the director, the French director that does the Red Hot Chili Peppers I Give It Away video? Oh, Michel Gondry. Michel Gondry. He does yeah. an episode. Um, yeah, that's in the second series, actually, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. so there is there is some... They're fantastic. Those two oh, things yeah. are fantastic. I, I won't say that the second series was bad by any stretch. You know what I mean? I just don't you think it was not. as good. You better not say that. <laughs> yeah, don't say that. Edit that out. I'm sorry. Edit that out that he thought about saying that. <laughs> But then all of a sudden, God dang, Andy, give me an argument for all of a sudden, will you? Uh, it's just the greatest show ever. <laughs> it's so damn good. It's like, it's so not... good. <laughs> like, Episode James... one, season one, it opens, uh, this, a black guy walks into the bar and they're like, whoa, a black guy? It yeah. turns out in the end of it, he's a gay dude and they're even more <laughs> freaked out by that. And so they just hit that straight away. Season one, they yeah. just it, but big issue after big issue after big issue, and they tackle it in a way that no one else does it. It, it still oh. hasn't aged badly, though. No, I don't think it has at all. Well, hold on now, Wendy. You about a year ago, if I'd asked you that, you would have said the last two seasons haven't been that good. Only in, in no, the last no, one. no, no. I mean, like as in regards the same way as Friends. Like, I mean, oh right, I see what you mean. Yeah. Like none of their jokes are bad taste even still to this day. Because like that was that was probably. How long ago was that? Like 15 years ago? 15 years ago, I guess. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's basically what that show is, is like them doing stupid things and pointing out how stupid this thing is. You yeah. know what I mean? And how bad of, how bad of a person these people are. Turning up to a school to protect the kids in the school with a gun and yeah. a sword. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or like whatever way they went about solving the oil crisis or solving the financial <laughs> crisis or all the things they used to solve. And then, you know, I was talking about how The Office has these really beautiful, dramatic, sweet moments in it. Like, talk about that dance scene. That dance oh, scene is so my good. God. I, ne- I don't like dancing. I don't look no. at dancing and go, yay, yeah, dancing. No, but no like, I don't like dancing. Did, he, he got raped before this, though. He had a, yeah. a, a objectively beautiful physique for that. So it was just like, wow, you know. Looking at that whole naked body, yeah. man, <laughs> listening. <laughs> no, but that, when I when I was watching that episode, I was just like, "Jesus, this is some good." I don't know why this is so good. Yeah. this is mm-hmm. some good. So I good. remember so good. the first time I watched it, I was like, "Oh, that that was really good," and I really enjoyed it. But I was like, I didn't quite wrap my head around it properly. But yeah. the yeah. second time I watched I it and went back and saw like how they feed everything that happens in that dance, they feed it all in. From the very mm. start of the episode, yeah, it's so well done. It's so well done. Or the episodes, like the where 
I'm going right. to just, I just, before we move on, like the bit when Frank goes, I get it now. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I wanted to say that his performance, it's not just Mac on the stage doing that and the, the dance partner that he has. It was obviously yeah. a fantastically, probably her whole life she's danced. She had to help Mac, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. But your man, Danny DeVito's performance, mm. he's representing the older people and he's representing us as the viewer. And yeah. what he puts into that, like, you know, it takes a 70 year old man to put on that type of performance. Yeah. Was brilliant. Like, Flight of the Concord yeah. is just a bad TV show, really. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get to do much real acting, like, for how good a real actor he is. Like, but yeah. I know, yeah, yeah. Comedic actor, whatever, like, but, but back to his old drama days of, like, you know, twins. Hmm. <laughs> like even so like the gay thing in Always Sunny of like is Matt gay like throughout the whole series basically mm. unlike the friend, Friends thing is like they're never making fun of him first they're no. just annoyed that he won't say it <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. they're saying and like then, you want to play ass go play ass but yeah, like, exactly. don't talk to me because I don't like you as a person <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they've all they've all supported like gay rights marches and all that, yeah, yeah, all that stuff, like, which yeah. is the right way to go about it if you're going to have any inkling of a, ma- making jokes about the thing mm. but I want to say the episode where chat with the the health and safety inspector comes and it's all in like one shot oh yeah oh, and Charlie's oh, yeah. the whole thing oh yeah, yeah. and Charlie's Charlie's musicals Charlie's musicals are yeah. unbelievable yeah all Nightman like is fantastic i remember when i was watching the one where he's like uh there's a spider spider deep in my soul deep in my soul <laughs> and then at the end he's like you can all go up yourselves and he just starts spitting at the crowd yeah yeah i was yeah. just like whoa <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. Well, i think a clear oh. winner has developed out of this uh little chat i think so too like flight of concords is absolutely one of my favorites shows Mm -hmm. but honestly it's not my favorite like jermaine clement thing do you know what i mean no men in black tree yeah i hear you (laughs) what we do in what we do in the shadows is amazing but the movie and the tv show i don't think any of you have watched the tv show have you i don't think i've watched the tv show didn't make it to the list no because you guys haven't watched it so i didn't think is worth putting in, but that show is so it. good. You should really watch that show. <laughs> like, the that film is amazing. Like, vampires in New Zealand. It's just mm. good stuff. And then, the the TV show is like vampires in New York. But like, right. they're all like European vampires. It's good stuff. Right. It's good stuff. Just watch that. So yeah, I I think it's always sunny. What do you guys think? Absolutely agree with Noah Sonny, even though I love Flight of the Concords. Yeah, 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 exactly. Same. We're fighting yeah. between two amazing shows, basically. You know what I mean? Yeah. There hasn't like, been a whole lot of people. arguments here now. Well, yes. I nearly strangled you at the gate on a friend's sign film one. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can see that. It was pretty close it. with the office and curb as well, originally. Mm. Yeah, it was. But we've all agreed it's been a problem. I've even agreed, and I put in friends, and I haven't watched uh, <laughs> Don't worry, we'll be coming up to arguments soon, I think. Um, next oh, yeah. So oh, next yeah. up, we're getting there now. Next up, we have <coughs> Alan Partridge versus Peep Show. Are you interested so in joining start. a podcast? We are looking for a new host who doesn't suggest things like Alan Partridge. <laughs> now, have either of you watched much Alan Partridge stuff? I've watched the whole thing. Whole thing, yep. Which whole thing? The whole, the whole, the whole episode. The series. No, no, no. You're, you the, put in a, a TV series here, not the man's life. No, 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 no. There's a TV series called "I'm Alan Partridge." I'm I I what I specifically put in was Alan Partridge because I think Alan Partridge isn't just that one mini TV series. Well, it Alan is. Partridge is is this unique <laughs> thing? No, it isn't. It's this unique thing of this character that's developed over like nearly thirty years in multiple right. TV shows. Right. And like, I don't think there's anything else like that out there. Like, there's no other shows where like the same character is in all these different locations and different ways. And each each series is like a completely new new style of show, unrelated to the last. But it's all telling this ongoing story of this guy who's like just a horrible, terrible person, basically. And yeah, did he want to just buy you? Did he, want, did he wanted to put. Did he wanted to put three or four or fifty different TV shows 
into one TV show. Did uh, that get run past you? I gave him the ocular, and honestly, if I had seen that, it would not have got through. Well, see, I didn't mention this. You defied the ocular. Interesting. Because I just wanted to have this argument. <laughs> Look, they should be commended for that. But the main problem is that it's not that funny. But it is, though. It's hilarious. I, I, don't, find hilarious. It, I don't find it that funny. If you're calling it's always sunny hilarious, that's not hilarious. It right, might okay. be funny. I don't think it's going to win against always oh, sunny now. But I don't think it's going to win against Peep Show. Like you're well, talking about I'm here. Peep Show. I'm here. You're saying, okay, you're there's saying a bit, there's a bit there's a good bit where like Alan is talking to these Irish guys and he goes, "Oh, Sunday bloody Sunday." And talks about <laughs> how and talks about how that song is about how frustrating Sunday mornings are. Mm, I remember that bit. Well, that's funny. <laughs> that's pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah, that's funny, but still, though, like Peep Show. Tell me about Peep Show. Well, I have, I have something I want to say about Peep Show on a point that James made on Alan Partridge, where he said, you know, there's nothing like it in this whatever he does about this, that, or the other. Nobody cares because it's a very boring show. Peep Show. <laughs> there's literally no show like this no. where they shoot it from. I don't know how you call it, like first person or whatever. Yeah, yeah. the whole show. Whole yeah. show, first person. Like when you start watching it, it's very jarring. It is very off putting when you yeah, start watching it. Like it really that. is. Really, yeah, is. it really is quite off. Uh, like I remember trying to watch like random episodes of Peep Show, and it being like, oh, I just can't. Yeah, can't get into this. Yeah, the other thing about watching random episodes of Peep Show is it is serialized. It is episode by episode. The yeah. story develops from one episode to the next in a very yeah. classic sense that you don't see in a lot of shows anymore. You don't learn how bad a person Jez is from one. Well, you probably could learn from one episode, but you don't really know how bad he truly is unless you've watched watched it from the beginning. Like he's such a America's terrible version as well. Like they're both. And I was going to say the only one who who could possibly top Jez as being a bad person is Mark. But at the Mm. same, somehow at the same time of them being horribly, abjectly just disgusting (laughs) people, just like Alan Partridge is a horrible man, you feel for him. You want them to win. You mm, want yeah. to keep seeing how they get on. Whereas yeah. Alan Partridge, I do not want Alan to win. I do not want to see that man succeed in any no, way. No, you want to see him get want... his comeuppance, which is what you happens. You do, indeed. And that's for me, that's not a, a show that I want to watch. I don't want to watch one where the protagonist is someone that I don't feel for in some way. You know, I don't want mm-hmm. to sit there hating. Hating on someone is not the experience I want in my af- afternoons. Hot cup of tea, hot cup of hot chocolate hot cup of coffee you know a hot beverage I've got a hot beverage <laughs> I don't want to get hot in the head with my rage and Alan Partridge well I think if you go with characters Alan Partridge is a great character let's say great for character. sake <laughs> but in Peep Show you have Jay's you have Mark you have Superhands Superhands my god I'm about to throw up Superhands is amazing Superhands is pretty amazing like I love at when he's um, getting married and they're going to like the stag party or whatever, and he's like, "Oh, we're not drinking, we're not drinking, I'm not, I'm not doing any of that stuff." And then Mark convinces mm-hmm. him, he's like, "Come on, one drink, you'll be perfectly fine." And then it cuts immediately to him in the bathroom going, "I love cocaine." <laughs> <laughs> there's just there's so many mad things that happen in the show, and I actually I haven't watched it in a little while. Normally I'm like in the midst of watching it, but. I haven't watched it in a little while. I'm just even talking about it now. I just want to go back and watch all the funny yeah. things that happens again. <laughs> I have to say I've watched it maybe three times in the last two or three years from start to finish. Oh, yeah. Netflix. yeah. So I've watched it I've watched it over a few times as well. Like Very good. Like um I wanted to have a little argument about Alan Partridge, but Peep Show is gonna be winning this, like. Yeah. There's lots of great moments in Peep Show. Like I don't it's hard for me to argue for I would like to argue for both of them, but I just can't see yeah. past Peep Show because Peep Show is really, really, really good. Like the it humor means. in it is so good. The way it's shot is so funny. The things that happen in there are so wild and crazy, and also so relatable. Yeah, actually, yeah, actually, Stephen, I wanted to make that point. No, seen, yeah, seen as his Doyle Bros. From the second I started actually properly watching Peep Show, both of them reminded me of James was Mark, and you were. Is a hundred percent. Oh right, I didn't expect that. I don't know if that's a yeah. good thing. <laughs> oh no, like not obviously not fully, fully. You know, not obviously full yeah, yeah. Let that... me tell you, Andy. Inside here, in this old cranium, I'm Mark. 
to leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not neurotic. How do you know? You can't say no to that. You can't say no to that. That doesn't make any sense. I said I am that in my head. You can't no, say no. no. You don't know what I'm in here. But I'm outside looking at your head. That's a jazz shape. <laughs> right. So who won that one? All right, that was Peep Show, I think. So will we move on to the next one? Yeah, sure. If, if you think you're ready for it. We're out of the comedy zone and into some drama with Black Mirror versus Breaking Bad. And it should, should be prefaced don't. that don't. we we did bring up Breaking Bad a couple of nights ago when we were chatting. And I was strongly of the opinion that I do not have any respect for that show whatsoever. Oh, <laughs> Zero percent. I even joked. I know you're trying to write. I didn't even think it was a TV show. I'm not going to curse. It's, so it's amazing how so, one person can have an opinion that's so wrong. So, so wrong. Let, let it be said, everyone knows going into this that I do not care about Breaking Bad. And I think I was the one who picked Black Mirror. So can either of you make an argument why Black Mirror is good? Do either of you even think it's a good Black show? Mirror, do you think I've that... watched all of Black Mirror and it is really, really good. It's really deep. Yeah. Probably one of the best shows I've ever seen. But it's nowhere near Breaking Bad. <laughs> I, I, I love, one I of love the me best some... you've ever seen but nowhere near Breaking Bad okay go on Jim I love I love me some Black Mirror too like but the the only negative I have about Black Mirror is that like the quality can be a little bit up and down you know what I mean do you think I think so like there's a few there's a few misses but there's some very very good amazing hits you know what I mean hmm like, what are some of the misses, would you say? I, like, that's the thing. I was trying to remember today uh, some of the episodes. Like, I, I honestly think, like, the very first episode about the president, uh, or the president, the, the prime minister of the UK, like... Oh, where he bangs that pig. Yeah. Uh, Which is so funny, because the real prime minister was a pig banger in real yeah, life. Yeah, no, it was funny how that turned out. But... Yeah, uh, really funny. I, I, I think that's, like, one of the worst episodes of the whole show, personally. Oh really? Mm. But it's so good. It it's all right, like, Are but you... it's just weird. Mm. You know what I mean? It's just not as it doesn't fit with the rest of the show. The idea I'm of these so like, good at... various mm. things, the various technolo- technological means having an influence, and it's kind of like the only technological influence is like, oh, we're going to put this up on the internet. Do you know what I mean? And what's so good about Breaking Bad that that makes you think it's uh, so good, Andy? Um, Walter White's character development, Jesse's character ve- development, the crazy stuff that happens in the show, the story, the dialogue, the <laughs> hidden gems. You know all the good bits, like <laughs> the way it's shot, the way the thing is shot. It is, oh it God. is beautifully shot. That show. Like, I would a hundred percent watch any anything if it was shot really good. Well, I don't even mean really good if it was shot to my taste. And that is just, just done so well. Every color is just right. Every like every time a person is wearing a certain shade of clothing, it's just perfect to make you feel like yeah. What and it's like he says in that scene. It's never. It's one of those shows that's never afraid to like just sit on a shot and have like nothing obvious happening in it. Do you know what I mean? But it's yeah, just like a yeah. frame for the entire world. In yeah. A way. Yeah. Like if you can picture um, when Walt tries to meet Gus for the first time and he keeps, he goes to Los Poyos and, like, and he's just sitting there, but all the colours of Los Poyos and all around him and he's wearing like a green jacket and all like, like it, it's like it gives you a feeling of what was going on mm. in that season, like like the colours yeah. that were happening then before things started to go darker and darker and darker. No, it's really, it's like, although Andrew said the story is good, like, and in to dive into it more, like I think the the show is obviously about this like guy who, you know, goes from being a high school teacher to being a drug lord, basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But and I think on his surface, like, it's very easy to look at it as like, oh, he turns into this bad guy or whatever. But like, it's more so about like he's always been a bad guy, and it's about his like his descent into uh, revealing his true nature in a way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the everything... kind of selfishness that comes yeah. out in him. 
that that he only admits, <laughs> or yeah, there's the selfishness, the selfless that comes out. Like, but obviously it was always there, like you're saying. But it wasn't until things were uh, something had to happen anyway, because he had he had he had no fear of what was going to happen anyway. It all yeah. came out. Like, and the bravery also. He was kind of cowardly. The bravery also came out. Like the good and the bad came out, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know that he wasn't. He didn't get walked over anymore. It's like it's so hard to wrap up what is good about the show because there mm. is, it it is like a a long form story and it all it's all like interconnected and dependent. Like you know, you you can't mm. just go and watch one episode of Breaking Bad. You know, what no. I mean? like it won't make any sense. Whereas with Black Mirror, obviously, every episode is just like oh, you just yeah. you could just throw on whatever. Yeah, you know what I mean. Ah, that's very flippant now to say about an episode that's about an hour long and is basically a, a self-contained movie. You know. Oh no, I don't. I know. I mean that in a good way. I'm you saying you can't like, just throw it on. Like you know, it, it's a real moment to watch Black Mirror. Is oh, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna watch Black Mirror. You yeah. can't just oh, throw absolutely. it on. Absolutely. Like, I'm. I'm not saying that in the negative way about Black Mirror at all. I'm saying like, but it's a sta- each episode is a standalone yeah. thing now. Like, whereas Breaking Bad is a whole. Like there could be something, say, in season two to hint at what was going to happen at the start of season three. Like, so I think me and Stephen are, or me and Stephen, me and Andrew are obviously very strongly in the Breaking Bad. Tell yeah. me some, tell me some of your favorite bits of a Black Mirror, Steve. Um, for me, I don't think there's a bad episode that I can think of. In some way, every episode is <laughs> excellent. Like from the music, the song choices, the visuals are immaculate like they have this episode in the most recent series which we waited everyone had to wait two or three years for the series because there's a big fight from all the uh, streaming services of who was going to get black mirror and uh, netflix of course eventually got it and so it took ages for it to be developed and they ended up shooting it in iceland and no one knew where this episode was set just by watching it you know you had to google it Mm -hmm. and because it was so otherworldly the landscape it was just hills and mountains and all this type of stuff but even the landscape is a topic of conversation in Black Mirror. Everything is presented, everything is considered by the creator so well, like they're really working to create something excellent here. And I think that comes from Charlie Brooker's background as a, as a TV critic. That's what he's meant. That's what he's kind of known for before Black Mirror. That's what he's known mm. for being a TV critic. So he knows what he doesn't like and he tries to make something that he does like. like and then he has is- the stories like that are so... Sorry, go on. No, I was going to say, it's pretty crazy that he like, wrote pretty much all of it. You know what I mean? I think there's one episode he didn't write. Mm. And, like, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Yeah, I didn't like, even know Charlie Brooker's in the do it. Oh, really? Yeah, it's all hidden. Yeah. Like, and like, he, he basically makes all these like mini movies. You know what I mean? Mm. That's really interesting. I, I think it's uh, amazing for one person to do all that. You know what I mean? Mm. And to have yeah. that singular vision that he does carry over between them all. Yeah, and for me, I suppose another reason I like it is some of my uh, another <laughs> shows that I can't believe I've done this list is shows like The Outer Limits and The Twilight Zone, that type of show. I mean, like after The Outer Limits left, I remember thinking for so long, why is nobody making a show that's like The Outer Limits or like The Twilight Zone? Mm. That's you know just kind of these one-off sci-fi episodes. Like sci-fi's, you go to a bookshop, there's like five genres. Sci-fi is one of them. It's one of the biggest genres. Um, I couldn't believe no one was making it and then they made Black Mirror and I was like whoa they've done it in some ways better than The Outer Limits and Twilight Zone did it um, like some of the episodes you think about uh, there's the one where everyone who dies gets uploaded to like this dream world and that's not even what the episode's really about it's really about this lesbian relationship that these yeah. two women end up having in the afterlife yeah, it's like San beautiful San Juno or San, San, San Juno or San Perdino or something like that yeah that's a really good um, episode and then I know we talked about uh, how shows tackle homosexuality earlier with friends and um, with Always Sunny then so they do that in one episode and then in another episode they have uh, Anthony Mackey uh, ends up having a homosexual relationship in VR in a VR world and like the way that they take the real way people are and put it into this sci-fi fiction realm I just find it endlessly fascinating endlessly fascinating every episode is potentially a drama a comedy you know they are holding up a mirror to society in the way that the great works of literature have for 
hundreds and hundreds of years, you know, they're seated in that type of tradition. Um, yeah. And that's, that's what I get out of it. That's what I like out of it. So it's just interesting when you say about that episode, because that's, that's one of my favorite episodes. I think the, uh, the, the kind of street fighter, yeah, the VR kind of street fighter thing. Mm. Because when you say it's, it's a homosexual relationship or whatever, that's what's really interesting about that episode is because the fighters they're being are a man and a woman. And it's about being in their bodies and the relationship that they have, kind of. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And what's really interesting about that episode, and like this is a bit of a spoiler, obviously, is but like it's it's they're played by two friends who've gone to college and everything, two guys. And then they meet up and there's like this kind of like tension between them. And then they have this moment where they go like, we have to find out if this is real. And they kiss each other mm. in real life. And it's like, mm-hmm. there's nothing. You know what? I read it differently. I didn't think there was nothing. I thought there was something. And they whisper something to each other at that point. And you don't hear what it is. You don't know what it is. Um, and this is this is one argument that I was thinking of before this, because I know it's going to be hard to argue against Breaking Bad, and I, I don't think it's going to win anyway. But I think Breaking Bad, there's large parts of Breaking Bad that... No, I'm not going to make that argument. I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, I'm ready to move on from this anyway. We have nearly so, forty minutes on six uh, matches. Well, yeah. Okay, so if you're if you're happy, I I like I do love me some Black Mirror, but I just think Breaking Bad is one of the best shows of all time. <laughs> yeah, Breaking Bad. We're going to be interested to see how the rest of this goes. Because I passion, I'll never argue for Breaking Bad. I'm never ever going to argue yeah. for Breaking Bad. So that's so. fair enough. But I liked your argument, especially yours, Andy. Um, that was really good insight into why. Somebody might like Breaking Bad. Thank my you, main bro. aim, my main aim tonight, is to get Stephen to watch Breaking Bad. <laughs> I will never, oh, I'd ever, love ever. It. I would love it. I would love it. I just don't like, watch it. I just don't like those type of serious, good real shows. shows that are based in the real world. I just don't care about that type of thing. Not for me. Sure, we'll move on then. Uh, mm-hmm. Black Mirror takes that one. I th- or not Black Mirror? That's the wrong word. Breaking whoa, whoa, Bad. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa. Hold on, you <laughs> called it, bro. I think you just called no, it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's just move on. So next up, we have Star Trek: The Next Generation versus Scrubs. <sighs> Scrubs just, is in case it's me, not immediately. Sorry, I just want to say, in case it's not immediately obvious to everyone, Star Trek: Next Generation is the one with Jean Luc Picard. Yes, yes. Thanks. That Make it that so. Up for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I really don't like any of the Star Treks. I hate. Really? Oh, I hate him. I hate him. Let me the... answer me. Answer me this, Andy. Which do you hate more, any Star Trek or those last two or three series of Scrubs? Now, I haven't. Hold watched... on. Let's see what he says. Let's see what he has to watched... say. I haven't watched a lot of Star Trek. The only time I would watch Star Trek is if it was on when we were eating dinner, right mm-hmm. at yeah. home. As a young fellow, like Scrubs, I didn't watch them either. I seen like one once. Once Dave Franco came into it, I seen it, and I was like, "That's me doing that show now." There was no need to watch the rest of them because they were trash. You knew they were going to be trash. Everything went. Oh, the trash. later series, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. what I would say, what I would say to that is that in Next Generation, the like first series and a half to two series is pretty trash it's pretty it? bad yeah like i went in back and watched opinion, them I, disagree with that now. I went i went back and watched them a few years ago because i just wanted to go through next generation because i hadn't watched it in years like and i think i got towards the end of the second series and it was starting to get good at that point and just there was no particular reason i just didn't get back to watching any more of it after that but there was still some fantastic episodes in there. But just in general, it just isn't at the same quality level that I know the rest of the show gets to. You know what I mean? Mm. So I think in terms of like shows having bad seasons, yes, Scrubs has some bad seasons at the end, but I think Star Trek has some bad seasons at the start. You know what I mean? What's what's so good about Star Trek? Like, what let is me it? Tell you. Let, let me tell you this. This is what happens in one episode of Star Trek, right? Quickly, I'll just say it, right? Uh, Picard, I, I could be wrong, but it's, this is just about right, Same with the same tune. <laughs> I actually can't. But uh, Picard uh, wakes up, and instead of being like, you know, the commander of the Starship Enterprise, he's like in some peasant clothes and some weird little hut. And he's like, oh. Where the hell am I? He doesn't know where he is. And this woman comes in, and he's like, I'm Jean Luc Picard of Starship Enterprise. Take me to your leader, whatever. And she's like, 
but Craig, it's me, your wife. And he's like, what are you on about, woman? And it turns out that somehow he's in the body of this farmer man on some random planet that doesn't have space flight, doesn't know anything about anything. And this is where he is now. And, you know, over the next like 10 or 15 minutes, he's battling to get back to his spaceship. And then he just has to accept, this is my life now. This is the life I lead. So he lives his life for another 50 or 60 years. He's an old man. He's over 100 years old. He's learned to play the pan flute or the fife or something like that. And he likes to sit by the water and play that and stuff. And then, boom, he comes back to the Starship Enterprise. A minute hasn't passed. In his head, he's lived 60 years. But now he's back on, on, on the deck. And he's like, am I Craig? Am I Picard? Was that real? What's going on? And someone says, are you all right, Captain? And he's like, I'm grand. I'll be in my quarters. And he, in his head, he handles that, right? And I think he picks up the fife and he gives it a little toot. And he's like, dang, that was real. Never mentioned again. Like, until two years later, like two seasons later, he's just playing the, playing the pan flute on the side. This man holds all that in his head, that experience of living and loving and losing for 60 years of life as a farmer and coming back to be Picard. That's what I love about that series. There's stuff like that goes on. That's Dead. pretty good. Like, there's there's some episodes of that show that are, like, absolutely fantastic. Like, when I said about the first couple of series not being as great... There's one episode that's about like so data obviously is a android mm-hmm. and it's about uh Starfleet want to come and take him away because they're like hey well he we own him he's a robot he's not a, he's not alive we want to take him away and we want to take him apart and break him down onto into all these little pieces so we can make more datas basically and the whole episode is just about like the guy who comes to take data away or to judge if they're allowed to take him away it's just sitting down and having conversations about whether he is an individual entity and whether he has a consciousness and whether he has a right to exist. And what it means to be alive. Yeah, exactly. Nothing happens in the episode, like, physically. There's no big bad guy. But it's amazing. It's one of the best, like, hours of TV <laughs> that I've ever seen. And it just randomly happens. And it's like, that was the bit that made me go, okay, yeah, this, this show is pretty good, all right, like, isn't it? <laughs> You know what each, I mean? Is it's about an hour without ad breaks. But I think like it's 40 minutes. 40 minutes, you know, typical kind of. Sometimes yeah. it feels rushed, though. I remember watching it thinking it feels rushed. I don't know. You don't know better. You just watch more of it. But what, what I would also say is that, like, I haven't watched most of Next Generation since I was, like, 10 years old. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm, like, yeah. that's the only thing. Whereas Scrubs. Scrubs. Uh, I watched that through all of college, like as it was coming out. Like I was buying the DVDs when they were coming out and everything. Mm. So it has a very like personal place for me, like as something that like you were watching it as you're coming of age, yeah. That kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, and I also, yeah. And like I think Scrubs is like the ultimate marriage of like comedy and drama together. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. I don't think I don't think it would win. A category of best sitcom i don't c- think it would win a category of best drama but like combining those two things together makes it such a unique and well done thing yeah i agree with that uh just the way they combined everything it's probably, it, I, I don't I can't think of any other show that really does it like that i don't no. know i think how how i met your mother might try but that's I'm, uh, yeah, that's i can good. watch it but it's not near as good like and i um, i recently started re-watching scrubs as well because oh, did you? I think Zach Braff and Donald Faison started doing a podcast of them rewatching Scrubs. Yeah, that's good. So that I, I like that. Yeah, it's good. It's a good podcast. So I started watching along with that basically, and that show is still so funny. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. it it does really hold up very well. Yeah. Again, there's just be moments in it I just be laughing my ass off. You know what I mean? Yeah, I really would. But then there's I, some really great characters in it as well. Like. There really is. It's hard. To, uh, just want to take note. It's hard to like shout out a lot of scrubs good points apart from that it is quite funny there is some moments like drama moments in it as well like mm, that are very good very often very good like stuff yeah. with dr cox like the episode with brendan fraser double episode oh uh, that's really good the climax of that episode is very mm. very good um that's your song there's real moments where you know two different times they use the same song that um the other Doctor show, Grey's Anatomy. Two different mm. times they use the same song that Grey's Anatomy used. And Grey's Anatomy is a drama show. That yeah. is mm. their whole thing with small bits of comedy, whereas Scrubs is literally the opposite comedy show with small bits of drama. 
but Scrubs is two times they use the same song as Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. Way more emotionally impactful than the Grey's yeah. Anatomy moment. So they bet Grey's Anatomy at their own game, which I thought, like for a show that it's so funny, it's mm. such a great achievement for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I came into this really, really thinking no way a Scrubs going to win this. Because I love, I mean, I, I love Star Trek. Yeah. Like, I really love <laughs> the Next Generation one. The other ones are okay. Um, but for me, actually, I think I've been convinced to move over to Scrubs. I think it, just like you were saying, Jim, you know, for you, you're coming of age. It holds a special place for you. Yeah. It, same kind of with me in some ways, you know, because I was robbing mm. those DVDs right off you. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and I was sitting, I was in the bedroom as well. Not getting any choice of what we watched, and that was just so comforting. <laughs> yeah, I know it's so good. Like even his little jokes, like Sasha the Hermit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Guy it's love so muddy. Guy the love. songs, like yeah. not even just like the 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 soundtrack of Scrubs was was yeah. brilliant. Yeah, That's the, yeah they really, really picked worked. a great song for each for each uh, moment that happened in it, and then he had Ted also on top of that. And some of the yeah, yeah. some of the times the cast so as well yeah. was really good. Yeah, so. I think a, a clear winner emerges there. It's, it's, yeah. Again, for me, very surprisingly, because Jean Luc. Side note: Has anyone watched Picard, the like comeback series? Of no, it? I haven't yet. I have no. it on my list to watch. I haven't watched it either. I think it's probably Amazon or Hulu. It's one of those that yeah, I don't have. So. Yeah. No way I'm giving Bezos any more money. I just okay. got it for free recently with my internet provider. Woohoo! Oh, I think it's cool. I think I did too. I think I have that too. I actually think I signed up for Amazon Prime by accident the other day, so I took myself to do. <laughs> but I'm still not going to watch it. No way, <laughs> Bezos. And I know you're listening, Bezos. Not again. All right, Bezos buddy. Bezos sees all. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Scrubs. Scrubs. It is. So next up, then we're in, jumping into our animation corner. Oh. We have Samurai Jack versus Batman the Animated Series. I'm going to lay my cards on the table. I'm a big lover of Batman, big lover of the whole thing. But for me, Samurai Jack is one of the greatest pieces of animated art that's ever been created. And I just love it so much. Um, I just think it's so fantastic. Andy, are you familiar with both of these series? Absolutely, I'm a little bit familiar with both of them. I have watched plenty of both of them. But not mm-hmm. like I would say maybe six years uh, for it since I've seen the last time I watched Samurai Jack was probably watching it with you, so probably more yeah. than six years, probably more like so, twelve years. So it's fair to say you're not really fanatical about either of these shows. No, but I love the way Samurai Jack was done. It was really cool, but Batman was also really cool. <laughs> but if I was going to say one that was coolier, I would say Samurai Jack. Because yeah. it's cool. Because there was a bit more of a story, Samurai Jack, wasn't there? Yeah, well, it was a story that, that you didn't know and you just had to learn as you went on. Whereas Batman, everybody knows the story. Like, mm. Yeah. There's no um, secrets in the story. Now, James, whereas Andrew's, Andrew's not fanatical about either of these shows, you're probably fanatical about both of them, actually. Yeah. God damn, that was a great segue. That was, that was pretty good. Uh, so what I was going to say is... Although Samurai Jack does have the story, like apart from like the ending series, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a few minutes, um, one of the really interesting things about Samurai Jack was, was that they had the like setup episodes at the very start, but then from that point on, basically every episode of Samurai Jack can be watched as like its own thing, because it's always just Jack trying to find Aku. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I I think that stands to Jack Samurai Jack very very well. Like is like you can watch any episode. You don't need to know much going in apart from the, here's a good guy, he's trying to get to the bad guy. What is the thing that's going to be trying to stop him this episode, basically? And then some mm-hmm. of the things that are trying to stop him are so beautiful and amazing. like The episode where he has to blindfold himself and he experiences the whole world as a deaf man and all. Like yeah, he intentionally yeah. does that to himself. like, And you are drawn into that through the way that they animate it. Like it's just, it's been done. Like it's not, they didn't invent that idea. But they did it with such brilliance, like yeah. There's, there's so many good moments in that show of like things like the I don't know if you remember the when he's fighting against a a black robot in a tower where there's just shafts of light coming in, and Jack is all dressed in white. 
So there's light and there's shadow. Yeah. And then Jack yeah. just makes himself completely white and the robot is completely black. And they so then as they fight, you can only see the robot when it enters the light, and you can only see Jack when he enters the dark. Yeah. And it's this beautiful. That's thing what I just... meant. That's what I meant when I said Jack is cooler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that no, is, I actually that remember that. that. When James says that, that I actually do remember that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's such good stuff. Yeah. But I will also say so that that's my argument for Samurai Jack. I will I think Samurai Jack is probably gonna win this category. But I want to say about Batman, some of the most Batman has such a huge influence, I think, on cartoons. Like, as far as I can think of, I can't think of any t- any cartoon show for kids before Batman that, like, had the emotional depth that Batman did. You know what I mean? It wasn't just about, like, oh, hey, we're all going to have fun. Here's, here's superheroes, you know, like, going around doing their superhero thing. I think Batman was mm-hmm. the first show that, like, really delved into the characters in a deep way, like, do you know what I mean? And told dramatic stories along the way like again batman the only thing with batman is it's so long since i've rewatched it myself but i was like trying to remember a few episodes looking back at things back at things and one of them kind of there's two of them that stand out to me that i always think of mm. one is where there's batman is like fighting it's the show opens and batman's fighting and he gets damaged in some way and he looks down and there's like a robot arm or his skin comes off and there's robot underneath and it's like, mm. what's going on here? Like, what, how's the robot? And he doesn't understand what's going on. And as the rep, as the episode goes on, it gets revealed that like, oh, he's like a clone of Batman and he's been, he's had Batman's memories stuffed into him by some bad guy. And he was created to like, not be a hero, but to be, a, a you know, a, a, to destroy people or whatever. But as he comes to realize that like the memories of Batman within this robot are too good and so the robot ends up like fighting and destroying himself and taking mm. down his creator while he kills himself so that he won't be used for evil. You know what I mean? God damn, that's such a story. From the minute you set the opening scene with the looking down the arm, I was on the edge of my seat. I was like, jeepers, that's so interesting. <laughs> and it's so yeah, well done. Really and then, yeah. so the, and the other one that I just want to talk about as well because it's so good. And this is one. This is one that's always stuck with me for some reason. Um, so the episode starts, and Bruce Wayne is there, and he's he's not Batman. He's just Bruce Wayne, and mm. it turn he does some. He, I don't know how it comes to this point, but like fairly quickly, he realizes his parents are both still alive, and it's like mm-hmm. he's amazed. He's like he remember he remembers he was Batman, but now he's it, it feels like it was just a dream to him. But then things very, start... Very, very similar to Picard and his pan flute yeah, story. Yeah, definitely. But things start very quickly not making sense in this dream. And there's things like he starts to read some books... Or sorry, in this in this episode. He starts to read some books spoiler and he can't alert. read them. Yeah, spoiler alert. He can't read them or anything like that. And he's like, why can't I read these things? Why isn't all this stuff happening? And then he encounters Batman as this mysterious figure. But as it goes on, basically he works out, hey, I'm in a dream. He woke up and it was all a dream. No, no, no. He gets it gets to a point where he's like, I I can stay in this dream world where I finally have my parents, but I'll be giving up the opportunity to help all the people out there in the real world. Mm. Or he comes to the conclusion he has to fight his way out and he has to fight the representation of Batman in there. And they're like mm. this is a the Batman who like won't let him give up on being Batman, do you know what I mean? For his own happiness. And he eventually like breaks out, and he is all a dream and all that stuff, and he fights the bad guy who put him in. But like him having to make that choice, like in a kids' TV show, kids' cartoon in the early nineties, like this wasn't mm-hmm. the stuff that was happening. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think your point that like this is one of the more better shows that was targeted at younger people. At there maybe wasn't one of this type in the way that you're describing it before that. Yeah, definitely. I think for this maybe seven to thirteen year olds. This was likely targeted at that. You're so right. There was nothing, nothing like this. And Samurai no. Jack probably owes a lot of its ability to exist in that because Samurai Jack is targeted at the same audience. So the seven to thirteen yeah. older people are going to like it too. Um, audience probably owes a lot of it too. Batman in that way. I think two other uh, storylines that definitely deserve mention for Batman are whatever they did with the Iceman. 
Yeah, who's yeah, Iceman? Mr. Freeze, Dr. Freeze, Mr. Yeah. Freeze. The Mr. Freeze stuff where they made him, you know, they, they legitimized his reason for being a villain was excellent. And I can't remember the ins and outs of it, but whatever, anytime Clayface was on the screen, it was like one of the yeah. worst, most born villains. He's very good in Batman yeah. the Animated Series. He that really is. That, that for me. So yeah, I think a good argument for Batman there, Jim, but you kind of shot yourself in the dick when you said at the start of it, I think Samurai Jack is going to win this whole thing anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I, I wanted to talk about that, but I, <laughs> you really like, did. I didn't want to just say, like, Samurai Jack is amazing, goodbye Batman. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, fair. like, it Samurai really Jack is, is amazing. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll definitely cut the majority of Doyle's argument there for Batman. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, of course I won't. <laughs> yeah, Samurai Jack has to win that. But never yeah. forget that I have the ultimate power to cut. Don't you either you forget that. That's true. Cut, cut, cut. No, cut. <laughs> we'll listen back to the episode and it'll be spliced together. Breaking Bad is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, when you made that slip up and you accidentally said Black Mary won, but we changed it to Breaking Bad. Like, I'm grubbing my grubby little bits over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the final matchup of our first round is The Simpsons versus Adventure Time. And Andrew uh, Reno, have you watched Adventure Time? That was my um, I have watched it and I don't like it. Really? Okay, and what is it that you don't like about it? Well, it's hard to say what you don't like about it. You just didn't I like just, it. You didn't care about yeah, it. Yeah, never, never really got into it. Never. I just, I, I couldn't. Is there a Finn or something? Yeah. Yeah, Finn is kind of the thing. The kind of vibe very, of it is kind of similar to Batman and Samurai Jack. It's aimed at seven to ter- 13 year olds, mm. and a lot of older people um, tend to like it too. But it's got that depth, you know. It's got that those type of things. What's oh, that? Different kids. Yeah, it does really have that depth. Like Finn is always trying to bang young ones the whole time. <laughs> it's like his main vibe is bang young ones. And Jake is like he's the yellow dog. He's banging this green chick who's a horse. It's oh, hot. Man. It's a hot show. Like it's pretty hot. Like <laughs> I was obsessed with it for a long time. You know, a long time. I don't see how he can look past the Simpsons for how many hilarious moments they gave us when we were growing up like the sentimental the sentiment, sentimental value of the Simpsons is gonna was gonna always gonna win it for me you know? like, Here, here's an argument I'd like to see countered by someone after season 12 or 13 you know really season t- uh, 10 and a half or 11 is where it drops but after season 12 or 13 it's unwatchable On Un- you cannot watch the Simpsons after season 15 you cannot watch it it's unwatchable so half of it is unwatchable and half of it is the best TV show that's ever existed. How, yes. how do you square How do you square that? That's the thing. I, I almost think of The Simpsons as two completely different shows. You know what I mean? Yeah. When the first set of writers left in after season 11 or 12 yeah. and <laughs> everyone else, right? I think from that point on, the writers who came in wanted to... Uh, they wanted to make Simpsons episodes. You know what I mean? But before that... They wanted to tell worlds. They wanted to tell stories about the Simpsons world. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, The Simpsons is so amazing. Like, there's so much like quotable stuff from The Simpsons yeah. that have just entered like the, the everyday world. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the amount of times that you could make three Simpson references in one sentence and have yeah. someone get every single one of them. Yeah, yeah. And they won't even be surprised that you've made three Simpsons. You know, I have two or three friends I could do that with, and. It just makes so many excellent moments. Like the stuff that goes on in The Simpsons. Yeah. Just the first 13 seasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So good. And so yeah. think about like all the all the other shows that we have on here, like I think say Always Sunny is fifteen episodes, fifteen seasons, like right? Yeah. yeah. All the rest of them, like the length that they're on when you compare with the good bit of The Simpsons. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. like I know you made the argument that you think of it as two different shows, I know, but it's yeah, not. Yeah. It's yeah, one yeah, yeah. show. Yeah, and history. And I'm a great historian. Everyone knows me. He's a great historian. History mm-hmm. <laughs> will look back and say, "Oh, that that was a show that existed for forty years or whatever it ended up existing for." And at the start, was ex was the best show of all time, and it made absolute horror show of itself by being just horror. Like, have you tried to watch season twenty? I am picking no. up random. No. no, it's unwatchable. You really, it's really, really, really bad. I'd love to know what someone like 
young and watching The Simpsons thinks of it now. Do you know what I mean? That didn't have the reference of the older ones. Yeah, well, I've got yeah. a 10 year old kid and he doesn't watch The Simpsons. I don't think it's a thing that anyone watches anymore. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I think they just have. I don't know how they're still on TV, to be honest with you. <laughs> I know like, they're massive money. I don't know. Like, But it was such a phenomenon when we were growing up. Like, that yeah, was on absolutely. everyone's t shirt. Like, yeah. You had to get home and say, you had to watch The Simpsons every day. Like, Oh, every day we watched it. In our house growing up, you had your dinner and you watched The Simpsons. Home and Away yeah. or whatever it was was over. Yeah. And there'd be two episodes of The Simpsons, one yeah. on RTE and one over on, I think, probably BBC or Sky oh, BBC One. BBC or something, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you had to switch over to get it. S4C. <laughs> yeah, S4C. <probably. Yes>, <laughs> um, and uh, it was just everything. The Simpsons was everything. Yeah. Yeah. And where's the Adventure Time? Excellent, excellent, excellent show. So funny. Uh, also has a dip in form after season five or six. Has a serious dip in form. You see, I never, I only ever, I stopped at like season six. You stopped. Just because, I think I like, I hit a patch where like I wasn't able to watch it for a bit. And then I couldn't, yeah. I just couldn't get back into it. Do you know what I mean? Because like, I would yeah. forgotten so much about it. It's hard well, I suppose to... if, if you wanted to use an argument against The Simpsons that it drops off. The Adventure Time dropped off as well, you mm. know, and just didn't make it any further. Whereas The Simpsons, Adventure Time never reached the level that The Simpsons, the heights that The Simpsons reached. Yeah. And in truth, it's going to be hard to argue that any of these shows did. At the height of The Simpsons, I mean, you're talking yeah. about a joke every five seconds. Yeah. And a good yeah. joke. Every, a good yeah, joke. Just constant jokes. Yeah. And complicated jokes and jokes that had me, you know, you're talking about how Breaking Bad has this great writing where. You really have to, you, or no, it was um, Curb Your Enthusiasm, where you you really have to kind of be paying attention to get stuff. Whereas a show like The Office, you can just watch it and you'll get the joke straight away. Simpsons has all that <laughs> in the same moment, you know. Yeah. yeah. Which it's just it's just so so good. It's so many cultural. It was a show that at the start referenced culture so heavily, mm. and then became referenced by culture. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It changed culture, didn't it? It really did, like, and there's yeah. that whole trend of people saying, "Oh, The Simpsons predicted this." About yeah, yeah, yeah. And people yeah, are, really you funny. know, crazy people are like, "That's they're doing something or not." But yeah. in reality, it was watching the world, and it was interpreting it, and it was bound to have it in a sense. So I think, I mean, how can you pick Adventure Time over The Simpsons? Yeah, yeah. Really I think it will have to be The Simpsons. Uh, uh, just one more thing about the Adventure Time. I want to say that, like, there's some incredibly powerful emotional moments in that show. Like the I always found, like when they go into like the backstory of the the Ice King, and Marceline, yeah. mm-hmm. like, and it's such a good thing because it's basically about like uh like Alzheimer's. You know what I mean? That mm-hmm. like he doesn't remember anything, but like years and years ago, he had protected her, and when the world was like almost destroyed or whatever, he kept her alive. You know what I mean? Yeah, he when gave she was just a he child. gave everything for her. Like yeah. And there's a great episode. There's a great mm. episode where, like, I think he has the crown or whatever, like, makes him lose his mind. Mm. But and he knows that it's going to keep making him lose his mind. But it's the only way he mm. can keep her safe. Yeah. And it's so good. It's so well told. It's like the the like. I think, I think it gets to a moment where like he get he becomes like, com- completely loses his mind, and it shows yeah, that yeah, happen, and it switches over to her having to protect him. Yeah. It's so damn good. like. And as good as that story is, and I'm even getting shivers as you talk about it because it is so yeah. good, I think there's another underlying nuance to that story as well where he has this power that he's using to protect her. <clears throat> but in the before time when he's trying to use this power to protect her at the start, he also has a woman that he loves. Yeah, And he could use, he could use this power to go and try to find his woman or help his woman or be with his woman. But he uses it to save a kid which has this whole other dimension to it it's not just I'm protecting a child which is a very noble thing and he goes above and beyond to do it which you expect a fictional character to do yeah. he's also saying no to the love of his life yeah. to choose to protect this girl which I think is amazing and another thing Adventure Time does on top of those great stories like that is it's really uh, psychological you know it's really trying to be uh, investigate what are the workings of your mind why do you, as a child, feel these emotions and have these experiences? And when you're confronted with a challenge that's emotion, emotional or physical or psychological within you or without you, 
how could you deal with it? This is how, you know, it's showing kids how they can deal with being a human, which The Simpsons doesn't do to yeah. the level that Adventure Time does it, as blatantly as Adventure Time does it. Um, you know, it never deals with Homer's alcoholism in a serious way. Um, it presents the same old tired trope of a big fat oaf and a, a busy slender woman. Every, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a tired trope. So there's things like that about The Simpsons. But look, it's The Simpsons, isn't it? It's The Simpsons. Like, yeah, I don't think you could argue that there isn't heart to The Simpsons as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because there really is. Yeah. I, like, I've also been re-watching The Simpsons lately. And I'm, I think I'm on the third series of that now. And there is so, mm. there is so much, like... There is a lot of, like, good, like, emotional content to The Simpsons as well. As hilarious and amazing as it is. You know? Like, mm. but there's, there's, like, moments of real connections in that show, too. And I, I like I can't see past the Simpsons here over Adventure Time, but I think Adventure Time has a lot of power to it. That is it does. isn't obvious when you just kind of see it as like this silly kids show. Do you know what I mean? That it is most of the time. Yeah. But when it goes into the deep stuff, it goes it goes hard <laughs> into this deep stuff. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, well, I think we can wrap that one up and say um, that the Simpsons is is the uh, respectful winner. I think so. And- if Andrew agrees. Oh, absolutely! Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I just wanted to mention yeah. Family Guy, just because you were saying <clears throat> we were talking about like the Simpsons having a joke every three seconds or whatever. But yeah. I mean, Lisa watched ep- two episodes of Family Guy the other night, and that show was literally a joke every second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every Didn't second of every episode, there is a constant joke going on. Although some of the jokes are him being on the floor going <laughs> 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 for like thirty seconds. So yeah. I love this joke every second, and like or a good joke every second. Okay, yeah. So that's the end of the first round. We might as well dive straight into the second round. I think there were some interesting conversations about all those things along the way, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what, how this all goes from here. So we we'll jump back to the top of our list in round two. The first matchup is Seinfeld versus Curb Your Enthusiasm. And James, you're the one who lays out these. Uh, Templates for us, which is brilliant, and I love that you do that. You obviously put some thought into this because you put Friends versus Seinfeld, which are kind of mirror like shows. Yeah, and it's ended up that Seinfeld has come against Curb Your Enthusiasm. Which Amazing how that works out, isn't it? Madness. You've Madness. planned all this out, have you? I, I have ideas of how it can go. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But but there's already been a couple of like the first round that I didn't anticipate going that way. Yeah, I kind of feel like I know we're looking back now at round one, but maybe we don't need to. I yeah. kind of feel like. Perhaps uh, Black Mirror versus Star Trek could have been a better matchup there because they're both sci-fi. That that could have been perhaps well, Mister Laddie. That how about you do it next time? <laughs> I won't do it. I don't know how to make these things. Just a bit of insight. <laughs> anyway, all right. Seinfeld, Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm. What it's hard think? to pick, isn't it? Because Seinfeld kind of led to Curb Your Enthusiasm, isn't it? In a lot of ways, like yeah, yeah. But that's but like Car- saying that you prefer James over me because James led to me because he's born before me, but I'm obviously way better than James. It is like saying that, isn't it? I don't think it is because I'm not your father. Like, <laughs> <laughs> What? You know what I mean? Though? <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Seinfeld v. Curb. Tough I mean, I, I'd like to say that it's a hard one to pick, but it's really not a hard one to pick. Like, Curb is so much funnier than Seinfeld, which I haven't watched. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fair opinion for you to have when you've never watched. Uh, and also, at this point, I should introduce, it's not called Seinfeld. It's called Haley Steinfeld. I mean... Rapturous applause. Thank you all I, very I, much. I think if um, if there's any argument to be had against Stephen having a vote in this category, I'd probably go with that one. Yeah, that joke, because yep, yep. I don't know what that yeah. was. I don't know what it was either. There was something everybody he's... applauded. Oh, <laughs> 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 to be honest with you um, I've watched all of Seinfeld and I have not watched all of Curb Your Enthusiasm because I just can't watch this guy going around and I'm not going to say what ethnicity is right I'm not going to say that word because <laughs> you have to choose when you can and cannot say that word oh Sonny taught us that yes. but for me I can't watch this guy going around with his New York attitude and his New York cantankerousness in his beautiful LA sunshine while I'm here I've got to, I'm, I'm miserable, but it's not nice weather where I am. But he's miserable, it's nice weather where he is. He's full of money, 
oh, I just, I, I can't. That's the beauty of his character, though, isn't it? That he's just, no matter he's what happens, happy. he's never really gonna be happy. Yeah, he's always himself. You have to respect that. He is always yeah. himself. Yeah, yeah. And but, uh, uh, that is just a character, character of caricature of himself. Like, yeah, it's just so funny. He made a TV show about himself. Like, it really comes. Twice. There's, there's a lot of times Twice. where it really comes across. Because, like, the thing with Larry is that, like, he'll just say whatever's in his head. Do you know what I mean? And it really yeah. comes across that, like, these are stories where, like, he's been in this situation and he's had, like, oh, I want to say this thing, but I never yeah. actually say it in real life. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I'll just put this in the show then. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? but that, yeah. the, same, the exact same thing is true of Seinfeld. Every storyline in Seinfeld is stuff that's really happened. Like, yeah. you mentioned that George is Larry David. How the actor... I uh, uh, can't remember his name, that plays George, uh, found that out, is because he went up with the script to Larry David and he said, this is preposterous. Like, we can't really do this. I mean, nobody would do this. Nobody would say <laughs> what George is saying. And Larry goes, what do you mean? I said all that. I did all that. <laughs> and <laughs> that's when he figured out, oh, this is the guy. Yeah. So yeah. it is true of Seinfeld too, except in Seinfeld, also some of the other writers were putting in stories. It's probably true of Curb. Yeah. I'm sure some other writers are saying this is what happened to me, this is you know, so on and so forth. Well, the thing as well is that Curb obviously follows on from Seinfeld, but it, then there's a series where it also contains Seinfeld. It's like, yeah, in it's Curb, true. in Curb, you get the yeah. actual real ending to Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah. Like, they do a reunion yeah. episode, like, in it. Yeah, that's really good. That's and there's really, a whole plot yeah, line really, of, really like, good. the guy who plays George, he doesn't want to do it, so Larry's just like, <laughs> well, I'll just do it. It's just me. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. And it goes and he, so like, terribly. Wears George's clothes and he looks so stupid and he can't really do it. He Some can't do it at all. Like, yeah. It's, like, it's very funny. Does Seinfeld have a moment, like a bit that equals Larry's bit of just peering down at people? The stare, the Larry stare is like, like yeah. Andrew, how often have we done that to each other? Like A lot, a lot. That's like literally so just a few, weeks, a few weeks ago, I think we were doing it to each other. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And nobody else gets it that we're just looking Seinfeld. at each other. I know, yeah. <laughs> Seinfeld does have that. Uh, they have Newman. That's that's their bit. That's like that. He says Newman, yeah. which is the name of the guy. Um, I'd say against Seinfeld is that uh, Seinfeld himself, Jerry Seinfeld, is a terrible actor. He is not yeah, a good uh, yeah. on-screen no, yeah, on yeah, actor. It's very off-putting. Whereas in Curb, yeah, sometimes you see people smiling when you think to yourself, maybe you wouldn't really be smiling there in most TV shows. Mm -hmm. But in most real life, people kind of smile at weird times. Yeah. You know, mm. you smile at funerals all the time, whereas in TV shows, nobody smiles at funerals. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, where, like, where Seinfeld feels very scripted, there's a lot of time in Curb where it looks like they're just making that up on the spot and they're trying not to laugh. You know yeah. I mean? yeah in the best way yeah. possible like i love that like that's the kind of stuff i really like improv improvisational humor like i love yeah. that stuff. Mm. really good you know yeah. I mean? in the same way that you improvised the pronunciation of that word exactly yeah mm. you yeah. gotta go yeah. with the flow you know <laughs> yeah but yeah we just mentioned that seinfeld i just don't i don't like jerry seinfeld as an actor or as a person yeah even i i watched i i, I watched a lot of the was it the uh, Comedians and characters getting coffee, Steve. I watch a lot of that. Yeah, I love that. I, love I that. do find it interesting, but sometimes mm -hmm. he's just so annoying, you know. Like, he's a challenging really like, character. I don't like yeah. his, yeah. his brand of stand up comedy myself. No. Do you know what no. I mean? But I, don't think I would say that his. Have you watched his recent Netflix specials? I watched one of them and I didn't get into it. Uh, it is a master of work now. It is, yeah. he, is, he, he is a master of craft. But I understand why you wouldn't like him. He's a very difficult person to get along with. Um, no more than Larry David. I don't think Larry David is very nice <laughs> no. uh, to sit and hang around with, whereas he comes off very charming in the show. Yeah, yeah. I think Curb doesn't have that problem of having a straight up bad actor in your face. No, yeah. no. Every episode, which is a massive problem. When we talk about shows not being as good, I, the, I think there is a series or two at the end of Seinfeld that isn't as good because Larry David left the show and it wasn't. It's not as good yeah no it's still very good it's still but very it's good but not as, as good. good yeah you know? why did larry yeah. david leave the show uh he's crazy know. yeah creative differences who knows yeah he's he's yeah. batshit crazy like he yeah. left saturday night live he just walked out because people said oh i don't think we're going to do that and he was like you don't know anything i'm leaving <laughs> and he just stormed out oh yeah and he never yeah. Yeah. No, and no, then no. and then 
he came back in the next day and yeah. pretended he hadn't quit and just went on with his daily life. And they do yeah. that as a series, as an episode in Seinfeld, they do that. Um, I, I think there's a sense where Seinfeld is the first three Kanye albums for Larry David, where he's, you know, he's going to college and he's learning his trade. Mm-hmm. And then Curb Your Enthusiasm is My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, where he's mastered the craft. Mm-hmm. And then he just moves on there. You know, just to put it in terms that everyone can understand, <laughs> Kanye's discography. True. So for so for me, who's I prefer Seinfeld. I would sit down and watch Seinfeld quicker than Curb. In truth, for most people, probably Curb is a better show. Yeah. And I, I think I think I was coming into this thinking I would probably go Seinfeld, but as we've talked, I think Curb is what I would go for. Me too. I definitely agree. The carb is the winner. I'm so sorry to say goodbye to Seinfeld. I, I know never had a proper chance to pronounce it as Steinfeld at every opportunity. That was my plan going into this conversation with E. Well, thank God for that. I was going to say Steinfeld, Steinfeld, Steinfeld every time. <laughs> I was honestly, I'm so disappointed in myself. <laughs> well, you have you the power on. of the edit, right? You can go back and just <laughs> yeah, re-record yeah. yourself. <laughs> Put in Steinfeld. I don't do that. No, I'm not going to do that. I don't have that much fun. I don't have that much free time. Uh, okay, Chris, that was an interesting one. It uh, was. One I, think, I think this is going to be a harder one. That's what she said. It's always sunny versus Peep Show. Oh, I, for me, honestly, this actually becomes very easy because um, Alan Partridge was the one that lost to Peep Show. So I didn't have to put up much of a fight for Peep Show. But as I thought about it, I was like, Peep Show's kind of annoying. Always Sunny is one of the best TV shows <laughs> of all time. Yeah, yeah, I will say that. It's always, always Sunny. sunny. Has to beat Peep Show hands down, like yeah. really, Emily, right? Yeah, oh yeah, I'd, I'd absolutely agree with you. I just feel so bad because Peep Show is so funny. Peep Show is yeah. so funny. Yeah, the like, and the it, comedy in Peep Show is a lot. Some of the Peep Show moments, I think the best Peep Show moment might might be the best. It's always sunny moments, but it's just that there's more. So it's always sunny moments, isn't there? Yeah, you think so? I I wouldn't I wouldn't agree with that now personally because I think the best always sunny moments like. The ones we've talked about, like the jazz episode where Charlie has to clean up the whole place before the inspector comes in. Yeah, like yeah. that's a that's one of the best episodes of any TV show ever. I think it's just so yeah. well done, so carefully planned out. I think my my the funniest thing I've seen in Peep Show, and it made me laugh for ages, and it wasn't even a big deal. I actually I just had to Google it there just to remember the actual quote. But Mark's in the kitchen making toast, and it's really bland and grey and everything. <laughs> And he says, he's, he's having toast for breakfast. <laughs> Brown for first course, white for pudding. <laughs> Brown is savouring, white's the treat. Of course, I'm the one who's laughing because I actually love brown toast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's when okay. I seen that first, I was crying laughing because it Our, was so funny. An- another fantastic oh. bit is when uh, it's Christmas time and Mark says to, to Jez, like, okay, you get the turkey out. And he goes, oh, what turkey? I, d- we don't have a t- I didn't get a turkey. And Mark like completely loses his mind. And That's like, crazy. Yeah. You're you're an idiot. This is always the problem with you. You just forget all this stuff. You're a garbage human and a garbage person and all this. And then Jeremy just looks yeah. at him and is like, "It was a joke, Mark. A funny Christmas joke. Here's the turkey and here's all the lovely stuff." And Mark just like immediately changes like, "Oh jeez, I'm so, yeah. so sorry, mate. all this." Yeah. And because of the way the show was made, like with the just looking at each other, you just get a full Mark just staring into the camera, and it, like you see his face like kind of crumble. Like, yeah, it's very good. And I suppose it does have to be said of Always Sunny, in, in a way similar to Seinfeld, that it's one Seinfeld. person in particular of those four is not a particularly good actor for a large part of the show. Who? Mac. Mac. What? Yeah. First five series, definitely at least the first five series. I I think Mac Mac is hilarious, but there's times where it's very obvious that Mac is like barely on the verge of not laughing. (laughs) You know what I mean? Oh, but that just adds to it so much. It does add to it. Like I I love it. I I don't think it's a particular detraction for me, but I agree. I don't think he's the best actor of the four of them. He's definitely not. Like, I mean, he's, he's the, he is the main creative drive, I think behind the whole lot of them, Yeah, but he's not, He's not the greatest actor, but but look, I mean, it's always That's sunny. Enough. Is winning this uh, round so. here? I think. I think yeah. so. Like I think from the get go, we all had a feeling that all of a sudden he had a chance of going pretty far. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So next up, we have Breaking Bad 
versus Scrubs. Again, it's another quite easy one because Scrubs is good at is very good or is decently good at both things. But Breaking Bad is just so good at being a drama that I don't I can't see past it. Honestly, this is a pretty hard one for me. Oh really? Like, uh, although at the same time, Breaking Bad is pretty amazing. Like, I love Scrubs. I love I mean? Scrubs too. But I, I, I think Scrubs at the very start is amazing. And I think mm. even before like the bad series, it's not as good in the second half of the show in general. Like they mm. kind of change mm. how things go. And and for me personally, I never liked that JD ended up with Elliot. I thought like their yeah. story had a good conclusion yeah. halfway through. Mm. Stop flipping and flopping. And... Yeah, I don't think they should have mm. revisited it. Snip, snap, Definitely snip, does. snap. Do you have any idea how many tree vasectomies has, how much toll it has on the body? Yeah, I know, sorry. Is that like, a quote from Scrubs? The others. <laughs> but, like, you made reference to it in the first round, like, the storyline with Brendan Fraser. Yeah. Is so amazing. Like, they have, like, that double episode at the start, and then it's, like, two series later that he comes back, and mm. the whole episode is centered on Cox and, like, Brendan Fraser hanging out, like, yeah and then it gets to this point where like they're at like cox's son's like birthday party is what it's meant to be like and he makes a joke to jd and like there's the heartbreaking moment of like jd like just turns him and goes like where do you think we are yeah yeah. and then the camera cuts and it reveals that they're not at a party at all they're at ben's funeral and like you just see dr cox be shattered like yeah. Oh my and it's God, so James good. Even no, no, I'm so hoarse. <laughs> know, yeah. And like, you see Dr. Cox be shattered by it, like, and it's so well done. Like, that's one of my favorite moments of that show in general. Yeah. Like, and like, that's why that show is so good. It's the last good thing that Brendan Fraser done, I think, as well. Actually, he's done something very, very good. It's like a superhero y. Oh, do Yeah, show. I've watched some Doom of that. That's really good. Yeah, it's excellent. I it's it's very good. And he's very good in that. Also, Ben and Pre- Brendan Fraser is having a little bit of a moment right now as we record this on the nineteenth mm. of August. Is he? Um, he's having a little bit of a moment. Yeah, people people are falling in love with him again. Um, he did a little bit of an interview and someone said, "Brendan, I just want you to know we all support you and we all love you." And he's like, "Oh shucks, thank you so much." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "But you're Australian. Why are you talking like that?" <laughs> but anyway, he's coming back, which is nice. Um, he's a nice man, I think. And he was, used to be really good looking, and now he's really not good looking. So that's cute. But yeah. so that's how much I love Scrubs. But Breaking Bad, like, is one of the best TV stories ever told. I think ever, like it's hard ever, to argue ever. against it. Like, there's so much nuance to that show. Like you said, that how it's yeah. shot and everything. Like and like, like I don't want to repeat myself, but I can make the same argument again. Yeah, oh, I know. Well, I, I think we is. we've made you and me have made the arguments. Like, I think that show is just so damn good. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, well, the fact I think it, I think it's. it's the, one. It's spin-off show, Better Call Saul, is like like I was debating in my head which one to put in this. Do you know what I mean? Because Better really? Call Saul is like Well, I was about to give it the break and bad, but if that's your argument, I'm about to get sick on my dinner son. No, because Better Better Call Saul only because it's not finished yet. That's why I didn't I put it in. So here. You t- you you think you're thinking of shows in the world. You've really done yourself here, bro. <laughs> you're thinking of shows in the world and you're thinking Breaking Bad Better Call Saul these are similarly leveled shows Andy do you want to weigh in on this or do you want me to just do it uh, I think Wait, you can just do it because I don't know where you're going with this yeah there's like so you think Better Call Saul is better than Scrubs you think Better Call Saul is better than Black Mirror and you think Better Call Saul is if better you than Star Trek if, if you Better Call Saul is very, very... I, like you I assume you haven't watched Better Call Saul either like no, I've watched some episodes over Claire's shoulder while asking her does she want a cup of tea. <laughs> uh, better yes, better Call Saul is amazing. better than all those shows you just mentioned. Yeah. Wow. I better really, Saul, I, better Saul Call I is, say... is a bit slower than, than anything ever else on in television. Yeah. The more time we're spending talking about this, the less I'm thinking of Bowie, you know, I have to say. <laughs> my opinion of, I didn't imagine my opinion could go down, but like, yeah. Like has. literally, as I said, Better Call Saul isn't finished yet, so that's why I didn't put it in here. Because, like, the story it's telling on that show is so good. And it doesn't have any right to be as good as it is as a spin-off show about the comedy lawyer from Be- from Breaking Bad. This is a plot twist now, right in the middle of the podcast. 
But I don't like watching TV that much anymore. Like, <laughs> no, no. There's, there, t- watching TV is not... I watch TikToks. Like, come on, let's get serious. I I, but I really, I really don't like... I don't watch a whole lot of TV anymore. So I haven't watched all of Better Call Saul, which is a shame. But what I have watched of it, which is like three seasons, it's, it's really, really good. Three seasons is definitely enough to judge a show on. And much more than you've watched of Seinfeld or Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, but I think, with all due respect, I think Breaking Bad has to be the winner here. I, Even though for me, it's so against anything I would think of as being interesting. There's no doubt. You just don't want to be shouted at. <laughs> no, there's no, there's no doubt that it's a very well made show. Yeah. That for the vast majority of uh, plebs in this world, they thought it was excellent. Yeah. And I, I, res- I respect the opinion of the plebiscites. So <laughs> I, I, it yeah, has to be plebiscites. the winner. Right, so yeah. Breaking Bad it is then. Yeah. Mm, well done, Breaking Bad and Walter White. Who should be said Walter White looks like our dad? That is true. Absolutely. I mean, which I don't know is that a weighing factor up until now? Yeah, maybe but... we're secretly like having like uh, psychological issues mm. about the show. Who knows? Or maybe we just like it because we like our dad. <laughs> that could be it. <laughs> okay. Um, or we think he's secretly uh... evil. I don't know. <laughs> What's the next matchup? Uh, next matchup is Samurai Jack versus The Simpsons. Well, I'm Samurai straight out the gate. Yeah, I'm for Samurai Jack because while The Simpsons, you know, we've said everything about it already, you know, it is one of the best TV shows of all time. That's why it's on this list of 16. Mm-hmm. For me, it still is a, a dagger through my beautiful little heart what it did <laughs> after, yeah, yeah. you know, season 12 or 13. You know that bit in The Simpsons where... Um, Lisa like throws uh, Professor Wiggum or Police Chief oh, Wiggum's Ralph. son yeah throws Ralph away um, and breaks his heart and then it yeah. cuts to Bart slowing it down on TV he's like look you can watch the moment his heart little breaks <laughs> and that's what I was like season 12 or 13 <laughs> my little heart just <laughs> explodes so, with pain Simpsons I think bad. Simpsons can't win over what like, like you're saying Stephen like what they've done to the show it, it got a bit too franchised I know it was massively franchised when we were younger and all that but, mm. but then once they weren't once once they weren't putting the effort to put in well maybe they were putting in effort they just weren't doing a good job of making good effort just weren't good at it like, yeah. yeah so I'm sure they were trying what I, I just want to ask you Stephen is what about the last series of Samurai Jack because I remember when that was coming out, I absolutely loved it. But you didn't seem to love it as much. Yeah, I remember that when it came back there that time. Yeah. To finish, to finish itself off. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. So Samurai Jack had like a hiatus of five or ten years, maybe more. Like 15 it. years, I think. 15 years, and it was always unfinished. They never made... It was never said, this is the final season. They just stopped making it. I don't actually know why. Mm. And then they came back and they finished off the story and they gave everyone a happy little ending basically mm-hmm. as far as i remember and they did it in a, in, a, in a somewhat interesting way when i first went back and watched it i really struggled with it i really was like i don't like it i don't like it i don't like it i don't like it and i was kind of like that going in to be honest with you and it's very hard to break yourself out of that but i watched the whole thing and it had its good moments and then i went back and watched it again and i enjoyed it much more and yeah. so yeah jim you're right at the time i was uh, totally against it but i, I learned to love it not as much maybe as I did the, the earlier ones, but it's kind of the story of a lot of these TV shows. Mm. If, if they were with you in your formative years, you love them. Yeah, and it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to go against. It's hard that. to see past that. Yeah. Joe. You know, no, that makes like sense. When Breaking like... Bad was on and, and your man was selling all these drugs, now I was smoking a lot of drugs, so I just wasn't <laughs> interested. I was like, "You're selling. I'm smoking. It. I know dealers. I don't care about your story." I got into my dealer Breaking here. Bad. The the uh, the week. Before the final episode. Really? Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I remember driving along the quay where I think it was one time you went to come play soccer with us, James, and you and Dad were talking about it or something, and I watched an episode of it and immediately got hooked. So I think we're yeah. agreed on a confirmed winner think, there. Yeah. Yeah. I think Samurai Jack is the way to go. I love me some Simpsons. Oh, I'm shocked that the Simpsons didn't make it past the second round. I am too. I'm like, I'm. It's a hard one, like. But I, I, I actually like think it, there's not much between them to, for me because I think The Simpsons is so funny and has so many iconic moments. Yeah. Like things like Homer falling down the ravine that time on the skateboard. The Grand Canyon, yeah. Yeah. 
and then like it's they pull hilarious. him up on the medical thing, put him in an ambulance, <laughs> and it, within two seconds it drives into a tree and he falls back out again. And the timing <laughs> of that is perfection. Yeah, it is. You know yeah. what I mean? And you're talking there, what season four, five, six, seven? It must have been. Yeah. Maybe even earlier. Um, I think that's the second series because I saw that recently. So, and like, even you know, honorary mention season one. Let's all go get frosty chocolate milkshakes. That's just excellent. Yeah. That whole episode where they're in the madhouse and they're all buzzing one another and the baby's yeah, getting yeah. buzzed and buzzing people. That's brilliant for season one. But I think show. there's a lot of funny cartoons out there. There's not. Mm. There's not as many with the like the stylistic brilliance of Samurai Jack. I think that's what the true that's what pinches yeah. it for me, I think. I often wonder would the Simpsons have be, uh, shows like South Park, Family Guy, American Dad, you know these ones that are mm. what's well, not so much South Park but Family Guy and American Dad which are with us, Simpsons. Would Simpsons have bet South Park? Would it have bet Family Guy? I, I guess we'll never really know. I think absolutely. There's no argument that I, I don't think there's any argument that Family Guy is better than The Simpsons. And, and Family Guy wouldn't exist without The Simpsons. Do you know what I mean? Like, Yeah. I just think South Park, I just have been thinking about South Park a lot and I'm just, I really wish South Park had gotten onto the list. I wish I had chose it. I wish I had thought of it because it's so yeah. good. But however, sure. I suppose that's, that's the end of round two. That is indeed the end of round two. We're into the semifinals. Things are hotting up. So we dive into the semifinals. I can tell you one thing that's full of energy and power. Thanks to our sponsors, Rage On. Crack cocaine. They will give you a raging hard on from morning till night. Nice. Crack cocaine is the better one, actually. Any <laughs> other sponsors this week? Uh, now for a message from our sponsors. Andy, Sadness. who's our sponsors this week? Coca Cola. Flavored. So, I don't know. <laughs> Nice. Favorite sadness. Okay. Thank you for sponsoring. Yes. Thank you for sponsoring this episode. <laughs> <laughs> right in the our semi-finals, our first semi-final. Two comedy giants, Kirby Enthusiasm, oh. and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. It has to be said, Andy's the one who introduced a lot of these shows to us. I think. Yeah. In my opinion, he introduced me to Always Sunny. He introduced me to Curb. I think James no. introduced me to them though. So. Yeah, I think I did. I am I am the original style maker. It's always sunny. Say. James tried to watch make me watch it two Christmases in a row. He tried to make me watch an episode and I fell asleep during it and I didn't <laughs> really care for it. And then I think I don't know, I think I just watched it on my own on Netflix one yeah. day or something and then got hooked. And I know like I don't want to keep bigging up James, but Stephen introduced me to crack cocaine <laughs> and I didn't like it, didn't like it. And now I'm hooked. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is a hard one. This is a hard one, but it is. I I think like I love both of these shows like it's undeniable like but there's only one of these shows that I've watched like I don't know 10 times at this point yeah and that's yeah, Always Sunny yeah. like yeah. Always Sunny is infinitely rewatchable yeah yeah yes. like even go back to season one and watch it like you'll be like wow this is really really hot and good and well made but they didn't know what they were doing then. And yeah. it's still as hot and good and well made at season 11, 12, 13. Yeah. Which are the ones that are in my head most recently. Yeah. And like, like the fact that Danny DeVito wasn't even in the first series, but came in and mm. just like yeah. made the show. Yeah. And it was still really good. Perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And there's so many, yeah. like the interplay of those f- five characters it's mm. just amazing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And yeah. like the whole, like the whole way that like we don't know if Frank is Charlie's dad, and they brought that up yeah. a few times at the start, and then just never kind of <laughs> went back to it. You know what I mean? And just left it there. Yeah, yeah. There's still so many things that need to be answered in the show that they're probably just never going to answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to say, like the some of the little web, weapon episodes are so, they're, they're they're my so, favorites. Oh. They really so are my favorite. They're very, very, very good. Or the siege with the McPoyles yes. when the McPoyles stage the siege and there's actually no one outside. That yeah, whole yeah. episode is that's, really, that's really, really good. good. It's like Die Hard. And, break and, right and that's really late as well. That's a much more recent episode as well. You know, just to say that they're still doing yeah. it good. Like it's not yeah. a, a series that's faded yeah. off like so many yeah. years. Like 
I think one big problem that I have with Always Sunny, particularly talking about the more recent series, is that it's always been a show that's aware of itself as a show and, and people as characters. And Mac really brought that to the forefront when he pounded on that weight so quickly mm-hmm. and then just went crazy yeah, to yeah. lose it and get super ripped. And and straight away he pointed out, he's like, look how ripped yeah. they Everyone look how ripped they are. And they're like, shut yeah, up, Mac, you're fat. So <laughs> yeah. Big problem with that show is uh, the actress who plays D um, got some work done, which is very common to do in LA. It's like normal. They didn't even mention it once. Never mentioned yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. The fact bring they it didn't up. mention it is the only weird that's a thing. massive yeah. problem for me. Mm. They didn't say, "Well, your beak looks different." Anyhow, yeah. you know, it'd be funny. It'd be fine. That's a big yeah, my problem for me. Problem with that is that I, like Max whole point of getting fat is that he was watching a show and he's seen these characters they just kept getting prettier and handsomer as mm-hmm. the show went on and he's married to D mm-hmm. and he said oh I'm just going to get really fat mm-hmm. to go against uh, everything they do that they were generally doing was going against the uh, general tide that's what made the show good but then if she just falls in yeah. obviously it's our life she personally must have felt like doing it but and it, mm-hmm. it, that actually the, the, it takes away from for me in the later seasons because I'm just like you can't be anti the rest of the TV shows when you're just yeah. going to go and do that. like That did actually take away from it for me. Too. Yeah. Um, my big problem with Curb is I do not actively watch Curb Your Enthusiasm yeah. because it just got boring. As it's a, It does what it does very, very good, but it keeps doing it over yeah. and over and over and over. It's the same thing. And Leon is not that good of an actor, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, but he has a really funny moment. Leon is Leon. pretty hilarious stuff. Yeah. He has some really funny moments. I can't understand what he's saying. Yeah, it's like, funny though, isn't it? Nah, I like him. He's not that good of an improviser, I don't think. I don't think he's on the level of the rest of them. Like, but he does have some moments. He brings something that no one else does. Yeah. But um, that's my big problem with Curb is it's just not something that I would be like, oh, I'll watch this these 10 series on a loop. Where, like you say, James, I've watched that with Sonny 10, yeah. 15, yeah. maybe 20 yeah. times. I've watched everything. Like that. Yeah. I think there's a clear way. Yeah, I, I absolutely think so too. Just because of the rewatchability, basically. Yeah. It's a shame to say mm-hmm. Carb doesn't win, but yeah, I'd have to go with it's so, it's sign. Yeah, it is such a good show. From Carb, I mean, but yeah, it's me. Okay, so our other semi final then is Breaking Bad versus Samurai Jack. There we go, Steve. Fisty Cops Mania, let's go outside. <laughs> I think this is just going to be James punching himself in the face. Yeah, yeah. Pissed yourself in the face there, James. You know, Andy, you've watched all of Breaking Bad and some of Samurai Jack and you've enjoyed Samurai Jack somewhat, yeah. but really, really enjoyed Breaking yeah. Bad. I've watched all of Samurai Jack and a tiny, tiny bit of Breaking Bad and hated every minute of Breaking Bad. How did you hate every minute of Breaking Bad? <laughs> like, I just can't understand I'm just that. like, oh... I've got cancer. Oh, like I'm gonna do drugs. Oh, Jesus oh, Christ! I'm a junkie. It's just so serious. Like it's just <laughs> it's such a serious thing. Yeah, wait until Saul comes into it. Wait. Yeah, I've seen. I've There's seen lots of comedic moments. Bob Odenkirk. Bob Odenkirk is. is a great, great actor. Bob Odenkirk is, is brilliant. He is truly. But he's always yeah. wearing a wig. And you're just staring at his wig. Well, yeah, he's a, he's like I'm a slimy like, lawyer. Yeah, like, that's part of it. That's the deal. The character is not wearing a wig. Bob Odenkirk is wearing a wig as an actor. Um, that's a big problem. I don't me. know because that's now, because in, I, don't think that's, I don't think that's a wig. I don't think that's a wig. I think that's just his head. I know it is. But I'm looking at it. It's a wig. You can see it. I don't. I don't think. I don't think it's, it's being it's a wig. brought up as a wig in the show, but like in the. No, it's not been brought up no, as a wig. No, 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 no. Of I'm course just... not. It's been brought up as a wig. But bar- in, in Better Call Saul, there's like flash forwards to after Breaking Bad. And in that, he's fully bald. So if you're yeah, after yeah, a bald Bob Odenkirk, it does exist. In a different show. <laughs> so that's okay. I would say, it, in respect of Breaking Bad, I mean, you got actors like the dude that plays, plays Hank. Mm-hmm. This guy. Yeah. He's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, the dude that plays Walter White. Unbelievable. Uh, Walter White's son, the guy who's like a kind of got a speech impediment, and he I think he wears crutches yeah. sometimes. Yes, yeah. unbelievable. Uh, the the wife, pretty good. The wife is pretty yeah, good. she's very good. Yeah, Jesse, very strong. Jesse Pinkman, 
he's good at playing that one character. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a lot of great performances in yeah. that show. Whereas Samurai Jack has the benefit of being a cartoon. It's harder to be a bad actor in a cartoon. It's a lot harder. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, but I can't really. I mean, you would say that every character it. in Samurai Jack was cast perfectly, but you'd also say the same for Breaking Bad. And there's yeah. a lot more cast. Sounds like. And what about the artistry that you've praised Samurai Jack so highly mm-hmm. for James? That's Andrew exactly... was a, and all this type of stuff. I would feel Samurai. No it way. It in the art, but it's hard for you to say, Andy, because you haven't watched it to the that much whereas James has watched both of these series watched, fully I watched loads of Samurai Jack talking to me about that dark and light fight I knew exactly what he was talking about that's true and Breaking so, Bad like there isn't a colour that is there's no there's nothing left to chance in Breaking Bad obviously it's easier to do in Samurai Jack and Samurai Jack is done brilliantly yeah for a whole TV show all these sets and everything to be made so perfectly is that uh, that's a really good argument. I think when you when you made the argument, I think it must have been in the first round when Breaking Bad was against Black Mirror, that nothing was by chance and everything was so considered. Mm. That was a really good argument. I didn't have much <laughs> to see again. Like obviously, I don't like Breaking Bad. Yeah, things like that, cinematography yeah. and set like, design and mise en scene. I just have so much respect for and Breaking Bad. Do, definitely, I would say does it well. The cinematography of Breaking Bad is like pretty much up there like I don't like like you said the artistry and com- composition of the shots in that show is amazing like mm-hmm. I don't and for me honestly your most show Better Call Saul or Breaking Bad Better Call Saul too oh, but, yeah also Better Call Saul <laughs> but I honestly like the art the artistry in Samurai Jack is also it's, it's like so amazing do you know what I mean and honestly I like I'm trying to decide between them in that term, and I don't think there's much between them. Like they're they're mm. in their own way, they are yeah. uniquely brilliant. You know what I mean? Like it's mm. because they're not handling the same yeah. subjects. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would say Samurai Jack is yeah, some of the compare. best looking cartoon work out there. You know, between the like sound. the the, the painted mm. backgrounds are so beautiful and amazing, and like the how the animation works in that show is such top-notch stuff mm. but breaking bad mm. equally in terms of like physical actual real world stuff is just amazing like and how these shots mm. are composed and how everything works together and how they tell a story visually without even like getting into the dialogue of the characters like mm. it is amazing so i think in terms of artistry i don't think there's anything between those two shows i know the sound i remember liking mm. the sound in samurai jack like the sound of the swords the sound of the little clogs or whatever yeah called. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it really, like, when he pulls a sword and they're unleashing that soft, subtle sound of him unsheathing mm-hmm. his blade, yeah. they'd really focus on it for a, a, a quick, sort of two or three second moment. You'd really go, Phew, yeah. and there'd be a, a Brett where you're going, right, what move is he going to make? And then it's, Phew, Phew, and he's made his action. Yeah. That was a very enjoyable like, experience, I think. I think. I think this is, this, is, this is my decision to make, really, isn't it? Because you two both feel strongly Absolutely. about your shows yeah I'm 100% and Samurai you're Jack you're 100%, 100% Samurai Jack of course he is of course 100%, 100% Samurai Jack I don't, I don't I don't like I know that Breaking Bad is a well made show that a lot of people like and I respect it for that but I, it's just not a show that I would have ever have any interest in watching anything about I just don't care for those types of stories and that's you know through the glory of God we can all find a pattern <laughs> like and this is my pattern it's towards Samurai Jack and away from Breaking Bad. And, that type of, that type and of talking show is about just talking about percentages, like I think, honestly, for me, between these two shows, it's like fifty point one. James, to I hate 9. you. Oh my god, he's red. Rev- like, you know, he's red. No, no, no. I'm not. No, honestly, like, this. like I, I'm trying to think. Like, there's intellect intellectually between these two shows, I can't call it. And literally, the only thing I can go is like a gut feeling. And I think it's Breaking Bad. Thank for God for that. Oh my God. <laughs> Why do you hate me? You don't love me. <laughs> He's talking about good feelings, Andy. He's trying to say, you know, in my heart, this is what, what's, or in my fucking anus, wherever your gut is, <laughs> where am I pulled to? And it's to the, the Crohn's disease one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I do feel there's what a bit the of one with mental problems? For this massive disease that I have. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's probably thing. what's influencing Massive me. anal. F- no. Andrew's massive anal figure. 
is somehow winning over. Look, this fisherman in my butt finally did some good. <laughs> I, I honestly think uh, it's a uh, hard call between the them, decision. and like it literally is just a gut feeling for Breaking Bad. Like I love both of these shows; they're huge, two two hugely influential shows on me personally, and I would happily mm. rewatch any of them at any point. You know what I mean? Mm. I honestly talking about this yeah. stuff. Half well, look, shows the shows I'm going to go watch, the watch again been... in the next few weeks. But yeah, I'm yeah, just going to go with yeah. Breaking Bad. If the decision has been made, the has been made. If the decision has been made, it's been made. But I, I just want to say that for me, you know, you want to sit that you want to say to yourself, I'm going to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sit down. <laughs> I'm going to. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy a hot drink. Hot cup of tea, <laughs> hot cup of chocolate, hot cup of coffee. Just a hot beverage of some kind, yeah. <laughs> it's really hot beverage. It's going to be with a show that's not going to torture me. Like Breaking Bad wants you to feel feel bad sometimes. No! Of course it does. Sometimes you have to feel bad when you're watching Breaking Bad. No! You're not sitting there going, you know, Walter White has cancer, yay. Well. That's not the story. Like No, that. you're just so invested. Like you're watching Breaking Bad, your mind is not anywhere else apart from watching Breaking Bad because there's there's just so much involved in every bit of it that you're not. See, I would say the same about Samurai Jack, which is why I suppose the decision had to go out of our exactly. hands. And that's I why I suppose if you're saying Samurai Jack, if you're saying Samurai Jack does that as well, I might vote for Samurai Jack. Well, <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dang. <laughs> Okay, so I think it's breaking bad. Uh, let's move on. Before before we dive into the final, should we take a trip to Andy's corner? Yes, absolutely. Andy's corner. So Andy's corner is going to be <laughs> like uh, a little spot where we just take a little break before the final. After all, the Stephen making bad arguments the last arguments. hour. Yeah, and. Uh, Mostly because it is Doyle Bros. It's going to be finding out more about the Doyle Bros. Oh, more so you two. But it's not going to be getting deep. Well, it could be something deep. I don't know. But we're going to start off nice and easy just for some general chit chat because it's been a long podcast. Actually, this might not be quite mm-hmm. good. Um, so what is your dream car? Dream car. <clears throat> dream car. Hmm. That's a good question. Do you know my whole life I've never liked cars or cared about cars, and I always didn't want a car. I never wanted to drive. Mm-hmm. And about two or three years ago, I made a bet with a fella on New Year's Eve that I don't want to drive and I will never drive ever. And I bet 50 euro on this. A stupid bet <laughs> because it was open for him to never, ever, ever. But I just had to get a car and he was. Yeah, yeah. And anyway, about three or four months later, I got my missus knocked up. And end of story, you got to get a car. And ever since I got a car, I kind of like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, what is my dream car? Daughter, you drive a real piece of crap. What's your dream car? <laughs> <laughs> I, drive a, I drive a real hey, piece our, of crap. Our, our, our car works perfectly fine and keeps us going. Um, but my dream car, I always, the car I always like wanted to have was a McLaren F1 supercar. Right, okay, thing. fair enough, right. But, I mean, that's You're never, not go- ever going to happen. Like, like yeah. that was literally, I think when it was new, it was like three quarters of a million. And that was 20 yeah. years ago. So, yeah, but this is your dream. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're putting limits on your. Andrew's immediately putting limits on your dreams. Yeah, what's your dream, Karen McLaren? If one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's your real dream? I don't think you should have such high aspirations as well. No, no, no. I got to get, <laughs> get, I got to get my mind and I'm my taking body a nice back forward. where it belongs in the gutter. So, I'd, I'd like a. <laughs> if I could get like a. A Ford Focus. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. At, so the actual alternate would be uh, a Nissan Skyline. Yeah, I knew that. Those, that, like, from Gran Turismo and all those. Or, no, mm. they're not Skylines now. They're GTRs. So yeah, they're, they're still so cool, aren't they? They're pretty darn cool. So would you, would you like a GTR or would you like a 1992 Skyline? A GTR. A new GTR. Would you? Yeah. Oh, okay. They're cool cars. I don't know. They are very cool cars, definitely. What about, what about you, Steve or Andrew? Do you have an answer yet, Steve? Um, well, if we're talking car, my dreams, uh, instead of wheels, you know, in that film, Will Smith, or I think it's AI, maybe? Oh, yeah, Something yeah. Something like that? 
No, I robot. Yeah. I robot. So it is, and the cars have balls yeah. for wheels. That's something that I'd like. Um, I, That's just because you just want to have more balls in your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like playing soccer. Um, so definitely that. Probably like orange, kind of a, a, a sunset orange would be the color of it. Okay, okay. Um, I'm just gonna stop you there now. I'd like it. That'd be my I'd dream like you character. to choose an existing car. <laughs> All right. I wouldn't know the names. They're really, really car. Right. Okay. Fair enough. To be honest fair with enough, you. Fair enough. But my dream car would be one with round uh, wheels, like devices, and sunset orange. What about you, Andy? Uh, uh, Mitsubishi Evo Four. Was always my favorite car. Still is. Evo Four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or is it four or three? And that's a different type of looking. That's a different type of looking car than James's one. Is they're it? pretty similar. Uh, yeah, they're kind of the Some old ways. kind. Of. Do you remember Shane Murphy's yeah. Lancer, Steve? Maybe something like that. Except his was like a fake mirage of a thing. Well, there you go. There's a bit of an insight into oh. the Doyle boys and their car dreams. Yep. Brought to you from Andy's Corner. Andy's Corner. It was a soft entrance. Make a swift exit and get ready for more. So there we go. We've we've escaped Andy's Corner. So it's time for our final matchup. Comedy versus drama. The eternal struggle. It's always sunny versus Breaking Bad. My goodness, how did we get here? This is the it's first just, one. This two. is the first one where I've had any sort of doubt over Breaking Bad. Really? It's tough one for Andy. This is really hard. Well, look, it's an exciting final for me. Definitely is an exciting it's final. Dry, obviously. <laughs> Everyone knows what my choice is. So, oh, I mean, yeah. it's a show with the best cinematography. It a bit for it's a show with the best acting. It's a show with like music that's iconic. You know, it's Breaking Bad. <laughs> it's a show that's defined so many people's lives. <laughs> I don't see, like, Always Sunny, yeah, it's a really, really funny show. Really funny show. And it's got that one super dramatic scene where Mac does that great dance. But Breaking Bad has just, you know, there's so much consideration. Are you really angry about Breaking Bad? <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to make a statement here. Um, <laughs> Breaking Bad, yeah, it's known for being a serious drama. But it has comedy throughout. Like, I mean... <laughs> It is the light in the dark. It is all these things. So for me, it has to be Breaking Bad. I'd I'd all I'd vote for Breaking Bad. You're talking about best TV show. You're talking about best comedy. It's always Sunny wins, I think. But you're talking about best TV show, really broad speaking. Breaking Bad is the one. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that. It's hard for me to make an argument as good as that, but I don't know if I agree with it. But there's. But Oh, It's Sunny is pretty funny. It is really, really funny. really, really funny. I think... They, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, they've, the fact that the show is A, still going, mm. and B, still as good. Like, I can't remember if it was the last series or the pre- one before that, but recently enough, where they did a clip show. Yeah, yeah. And... It was it's the it's the best clip show I've ever I've ever seen because I like clip shows are inherently incredibly boring. And yeah. Like, but they did it in the always sunny way where they started off just a plain old clip show, but then as they go on, they start to misremember things. Yeah. <laughs> and it starts to get more and more wild to the point yeah. that like they do an episode of Seinfeld where they're like three of them are Jerry, <laughs> and then they get to the point where they start creating these fantasies about what's going on and they start forgetting what's the real world and what's the thing that they're making up. And it makes no sense, but it's fantastic. And it's a whole new take that this show has never done before, but it's taken it in a completely new direction. You know what I mean? Was was the waiting, was the was the episode where they're at the laser tag, was that a take on waiting for Godot? I'm not sure, unfortunately. Never seen or read Wait for God. No, I mean, no, I haven't either, but that's obviously referenced because like, it's waiting for Big Mo. Yeah, yeah. And it's definitely. It must be. I have, I have to say that the episode you're describing, Jim, with the Seinfeld thing, I thought it was horrible. A horrible, really? horrible episode. I, I love that it's episode. It's one I always, I always skip that one now. It's so. actually one of my favorite episodes of the whole show, I think. like, And like, 
because there's also this little joke in it of like Charlie watching himself in a fantasy and then the episode mm-hmm. ends with like them trying to decide to say oh we're back definitely back in the real world now and they're all just standing there and then you just see Charlie's head poking in from the far end of the bar looking around at all of them and smiles and leaves and that's how they end the show and it's mm. like so is this entire thing a fantasy <laughs> what? so what are you calling her on this James I don't know like Breaking Bad is so damn good though like I will make a decision I will say that I'm going to go with Breaking Bad probably because it ended it has a really good ending I can't see Sonny ever had him such a well maybe they will have such a really good ending they might do something but who knows um I don't like Christmas episodes and things and the sunny Christmas episodes are good but I just I just don't don't enjoy Christmas episodes and there has been a handful of bad episodes of It's Always Sunny whereas there has been it's true whereas with Breaking Bad I've never not absolutely loved an episode of Breaking Bad that's true and it's such a good story it is and um it's so uh it is it's again it's 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 a toss up for me, do you know what I mean in a way like yeah, it's really I, it is close to fifty fifty i mean i'd be I'd be perfectly happy with saying Breaking Bad is the greatest t v show of all time mm. if I'm sitting down looking at t v I'm looking at t v I want it to make me smile, I want to look at it, and I want to look nice, I want people in it to be really good characters. And I wanted the sound, the soundtrack to be really good. That's what I look for in mm. anything that I'm watching. And Breaking Bad mm. is ten out of ten on that. Yeah. Where sometimes D makes me not. B, the waitress and Frank's girlfriend. Yeah, sometimes I don't okay. feel like they're too strong of a character. Sometimes. I get you. Um, I definitely feel like you know in the Simpsons when it's going to be a Lisa episode. Yeah, I feel like do they do D episodes? I don't know. Maybe they do, mm-hmm. but I feel like if there was a D episode, I just oh, wouldn't they that did. They, they did, did the airplane, the airplane one, and I really did. D enjoy took that. the lead. I didn't enjoy it, but I do feel like if they had done that two years ago, done the airplane one with D or the original airplane one, D was great in it. I thought. Yeah, brilliant. Like, I know a lot of people shit on that episode because it was coming out at a similar time that they were doing a lot of, like, all-female casts of what had previously been all-male cast. Mm-hmm. A lot of people shit well, on that. was the that point reason. of the episode, like... That was the point of the episode, and I thought that was cool. That The whole premise, I love it. That was great. Cool, and the, way yeah. that they, yeah. the way that it was written was really good. And all that type of stuff was good. But it was literally just the performance of the actress that plays the... Yeah. They didn't enjoy it. Whereas up until season 10 or 11, I enjoyed almost all of her performances really yeah. like the, the episode where they've got the vaccine or they've got the germ or something and Frank's going around with his camcorder and he's like say it D say you've got the book and she goes what I've got the book <laughs> the way she delivers that line is brilliant or yeah. when they're saying um, she's pretending to be a stuttering bible person and she's like dad and dad eating bad puss so funny that was really well delivered. It was good. It yeah. was by her very well delivered. So, uh, but it's unfortunate to see that she's not as, as good at her job, in my opinion, as she used to be. Yeah. Which I don't think that happened. Like, I mean, I I don't have to say spoiler alert because I never watched the show, but that scene in Breaking Bad where Hank goes to the crapper and he mm. picks up a book or something mm. and this realisation dawns Walt on him Whitman. at this point. And up until, up until then there's been so many close calls where he could have figured it out. Yeah. And, yeah. and early days, Walt White is, you know, oh shit, he's going to figure it out. And as it went on, us as the audience is like, surely he's going to figure it out and he never does until he's on the crapper. Yeah. And it dawns on him. That's a great, it's a good great idea. acting performance yeah. from this actor who's excellent, but he's a kind of, is he a secondary character? He's not primary really, is he? No, no, so I think he's a secondary, but not... No, oh, not a minor serious. character. Though. No, this is not minor. Not minor, no. No. Well, he's secondary like so in the same way that everybody is secondary to Walton. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But who's 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 the primary cast of Always Sunny? It's the four, right? Yeah. There's the four. No, five. There's five. five. Sorry, yeah. five. I was forgetting about Frank. Yeah. So I've made my call. 
Breaking Bad for me. I don't know, Steve. Well, I've, yeah, I've called Breaking Bad. Definitely. Yeah, I think I'll have to give it a Breaking Bad too. I think that's going to be our our overall winner, <laughs> really, isn't it? And so who, who we chose all... Breaking Bad? Sorry, who put Breaking Bad in the tournament? I think it was me. I think it was me. I think it was me. Hmm. <laughs> I guess we'll never know. I think I think it was you, Andrew, only because you picked before I did. <laughs> yeah, but I, I won. Uh, yeah, there you go. There's our official best TV show, according to the Doll Boys, is Breaking Bad. The one and only real source for any opinion. Exactly. But if you think you've got some different opinions about what should be the, def- the TV show of the bestness, I don't know how to say that, uh, you can make sure and reach out to us and let us know. You can email us at doyleboyspodcast at gmail.com or find us on Twitter or Instagram and just say, give us a follow and say, hey, I don't agree with what you said about that TV show or whatever. Or if you want to annoy each of us individually, you could find me on like Twitter and YouTube and all those funny places at Games Plus James, where you can also learn about making games and all that kind of fun stuff. What about you guys? Where can you be found on the internet, Steve? Uh, you can find me most places as Knucklebutt. Uh, TikTok or Instagram are the best places to get me. Yeah, I'm just going to run the dial by Instagram page. I don't do socials. Nice. My, my opinions are too hot. Hot button topics. Everybody want to get into Andy's corner. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. If you enjoy the show, obviously, like tell people about it. It's a new podcast. You got to tell, share the wealth share, around, share. so everybody knows how cool the Doyle Boys are. But mm-hmm. that one person, you know, you know who it is. You know, you're thinking of them now. That one person. Don't tell them. Don't let them know. Because okay. they'll just do the usual. Well, there you go. How do we end the show? I don't know. We don't have like a cool way to end the show yet. We say, if you need opinions, come to Doll Boys. Doll Boys. <laughs> Doll Boys. That was the show. That was the show.